Okay, I would like to um, open the uh, Monday, June 10th, uh, 2019 Board of Selectmen meeting. Can we please stand to pledge allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we don't um, have anyone here for public comment. Um, Kathy, can you, would you do the warrants? Read the warrants. Okay. First time. So, payroll warrant 19-49 for $146,640.86. Get a second. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yep. And bill warrant 19-49 for one million sixty-two dollars. No, sorry, correct me. One million sixty-two five hundred ninety and ninety cents. Can you get a second? I'll second that. All in favor? I'm sorry. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we need to approve the minutes of the May 13th, 2019 meeting. So moved. Second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. For appointments, we have an appointment of um, Jeremy Lapoon of 116 Seven Star Road, Groveland, for the position of the Water and Sewer Commissioner until the next annual election, May 4th, 2020. Is Jeremy here? If you, you want to come up to up the podium, the if you want to say anything? Or you can use the microphone right here if you like. Jeremy. Whatever you feel comfortable with. I, I did fine. Okay. Um, so thank you for stepping up to the plate. Basically, um, you, it seems like I read your paperwork. It seems like you have some background in the water and sewer. Yeah, I do. So um, I'm the vice president of product operations for a software company doing construction, uh, project management as a SaaS. A lot of our clients are in the uh, sewer and water kind of area, so I'm very familiar kind of their crews and what they do. Yep. And, and on, on site fairly often. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have anything they want to say or talk No, about? I just wanted to say thank you very much for stepping forward. We certainly need to fill that position at this time because oh, there's a lot to thank work you. that they have to do. Okay. <laughs> you know, I guess I'll uh, find uh, out. No, I guess I've got a couple questions. Okay. Okay. Make a motion to approve. No, Ed uh, wants to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, look, we've... Uh, we, we had this discussion before. Uh, will you help to spearhead the efforts to get the uh, your fellow commissioners, if, you, if we vote for you, to get the uh, water and sewer uh, meetings on cable TV? It's uh, it, it right now it, it's one of the few departments that, that don't broadcast their meetings. They they, they operate basically in a stealth mode. Uh, they uh, it, we have this room that is wired to get the TV uh, coverage, and the fire station. And for some reason, the uh, uh, water department is, is one of the few that, that won't get their meetings on TV so people can know what's going on uh, in the water department. Uh, well, I've never met them, so I don't know why they're not doing that, but I'll, I'll bring that up when I see them for the first time next week. So I, okay. I personally have no objection to it. Uh, I'm sorry, what was, I, I missed that. I personally have no objection to it being no. televised, but I don't know why they do what they currently do. I know we had, a, we had a, uh, some questions uh, in the past where uh, the townspeople weren't aware of, of uh, some project or, or whatever that the water department is doing, and uh, we, we would have been discussed at their meetings, but uh, no, nobody can watch that on a, on a TV, and the idea of the... Uh, local access was the uh, TV was to to get these meetings on board, and I know uh, a couple of years ago when Bill Dunn was the chairman, he, he tried to push for uh, all uh, all the committees and boards to uh, to meet so that the town people know what's going on. So maybe you can bring that back to your fellow board members, and uh, I, I, will, I will definitely bring it up. Thank you, thank you, right. and I'll uh, uh, I'll make the motion that we Wait appoint. Wait a minute, she, Kathy oh, wants to say oh, something. I'm assuming you oh. second. I already moved him. Um, yeah, I I would just caution that um, we have this this one room and all the boards trying to use this one room. So figure out what what we need to do to help you guys out to be on TV, and we'll 
will, will help you. Uh, the fire so, station, central fire station is also wired for uh, Right, to I don't be know broadcast. about how accessible it is to people that are on the fire department. No, it's fully accessible. The issue is we don't have enough people recording meetings. That's our oh, issue, okay. is if they're meeting the same night, we only have one person right. normally recording. Right, so I mean, I think we have to be reasonable. And, and for the most part, I'm just glad you stepped forward. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. No other further discussion? Everybody in favor? Yes. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, we have the Stonebridge um, residents to discuss a fire pit built on town property. So I don't know if you guys feel more what? comfortable sitting in here or going to the podium, whatever you want to do. You can both go. I'll do my best to speak and not cough, but um, um, it killed me this evening. Um, so thank you for taking the time to speak with us um, and review the matter regarding Point of order. One second. Sorry? Could you just say your names oh, and sorry. your addresses, please? Um, thank Kristen you. Potter, 8 Stonebridge Road. Thank you. And God. Michelle Heidler, 28 Stonebridge Road. Thank you. Um, so thank you for taking the time to review the matter of the fire pit located at the cul-de-sac for Stonebridge. I'm here tonight as a resident of Stonebridge to receive notification from the road superintendent that the fire pit located at the end of our street was in violation of public property being used for private use. The statement couldn't be further from the truth. As voted in 2009, our street is recognized by the town of Groveland as a public way. With that said, in the 11 and a half years that my family and I have lived on this street, no effort has been put forth by the town to maintain the entrance or the property located in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Over those years, my husband, along with others in our neighborhood, have taken turns mowing and clearing the entrance to our street. In 2011, a conversation took place between the residents at the Circle and the then road superintendent, Mr. Eric Kellyan, regarding the removal of a dead tree, the addition of a community fire pit at the, end of our, at the end of our street. At the end of that conversation, they were given the okay to move forward. These residents surrounding the Circle then took it upon themselves to personally finance the revival of the Circle and beautify the area by trimming existing shrubbery, ordering gravel, professionally installing a fire pit. The purpose of this was for our community of friends, not only on Stonebridge and not only in Groveland, but for anyone to be able to gather and enjoy the outdoor space. Over the years, this community space has been enjoyed by many, most famously on Halloween, as trick-or-treaters from our street, surrounding neighborhoods, and other towns have gathered to enjoy roasting marshmallows and simply socializing with friends. My children, along with others, have enjoyed s'mores by the fire, riding bikes, and time with their friends around that circle. During that time, over the years, police officers have patrolled our neighborhood, firefighters have driven around the circle, and not once was there a concern for safety or the use of the space. I can recall our street with a fire in the fire pit, they have stopped to chat, and not once was there a concern or comment made in regards to the use of the space. Groveland is a community that prides itself on being a small town, with small town values. I know that that is one of the reasons we chose to move here 11 and a half years ago. Our no neighborhoods all have their own characteristics and sense of individual communities. When speaking with other families in this town regarding this issue, most commented, how great is it that a neighborhood like yours has that space and that you're able to come together and enjoy it as families? This issue of whether the fire pit is private use or public space is not the issue. The issue was brought forth to the Board of Selectmen due to a personal vendetta between neighbors that had nothing to do with the existence or use of that fire pit. It's unfortunate that this individual is unable to see the value of the space and ruin the sense of community that has been built within our neighborhood because of a simple disagreement with one individual. On behalf of the neighbors of Stonebridge and for those who have enjoyed our street from the town of Groveland and surrounding towns, I ask that you reconsider your motion to have the fire pit removed and let us continue to maintain the space as a community and use it in its current state. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone want to start out by saying anything? Uh, um, being new, I just wanted to clarify. She said there was a, a motion made by the board already on this. So no, this back in 2009, there was just a motion that the street was, was deemed, it went from private to public. That was the only. No, I thought at the end of your <coughs> statement that you just read, I thought you said to reconsider your motion. Oh, right, because we received a letter. Did, do you want to look at it? This, so the board it's the Board of Selectmen have not okay. voted on this, no. Oh, oh we have not voted on Well, there, okay, we received I just a letter from the, do you want me to read you the letter or? 
No, it's not from us, though, is what I'm asking. It's from the road superintendent, Rennie Carroll. Okay, yes. I realize that he's already um, waiting on this. Oh, Thank okay. you. That's what I wanted to clarify. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay, does anyone want to speak? Yeah, I have, have, a read, have a read the letter. Oh, you want to read the letter, I guess. Rennie's letter, too. Okay. Um, there's actually, no, the there's actually no date on it of when we got this. Um, it says to the residents of Stonebridge Road, hello, I am the new road superintendent and during recent road inspections of your newer development, Center Place, it came to my attention that the end of the cul-de-sac, i.e. the circle, is being used for personal use. This is public property and shall not be used for any private use in any manner. I strongly suggest that if any persons wanting to remove their personal property or re relocate it ASAP as the highway department will be on site within 30 days to return this circle to its original purpose. Thank you for your cooperation and help with this matter. Feel free to contact me about needing more time in this matter. Sincerely yours, Rennie Carroll. And we received this about a month ago. Uh, about a month ago, mm -hmm. but there's no actual date on the okay. on the letter. Okay. Uh, I've been out there to look at that. Who 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 put the shrubbery out there? Was that the developer of the project originally? The the, the fire bushes that go in the circle. That yes. was the developer. There was also a tree in the center that had died. That was the developer. And there were a bunch of low-growing shrubbery, also deer-resistant evergreens that the developer had put in but had died. And there had been wood chips. Uh, but the wood chips actually, you know, after a few years of, and not being maintained and replaced, uh, dried up, blew away, and it was essentially all weeds. So the the pebbles are new. And who who put the pebbles? The uh, uh, my husband and I. Yeah. Okay. And who who paid for the fire pit? It was a joint uh, payment among several neighbors. Uh, but it, no nobody got any written permission to be putting a structure like that on the town property. So the, because the property had not been maintained, literally, I've been there for 11 years, and it's never once been maintained. And when I look out my front door, that's, that's my line of sight right there. And it literally was just a falling apart um, pile of weeds. And, uh, so we at Brandon Arakelian was, was our former neighbor and his father was the former road commissioner. Mm -hmm. So before we did that, we asked Brandon to ask his father if it would be okay. We did not get it in writing. Uh, I, mean, I, I have a problem with it because uh, uh, it, it, the town enters into a liability. If, uh, if you have a gathering out there, uh, if there's uh, if there's drinking of alcoholic beverages there, you're on town property. You, that that's not allowed. Uh, you know, maybe the, the ro former road commissioner overstepped his bounds by giving a, a permission to have the uh, uh, fire pit on on, on town property. Uh, and uh, t tell me, just just tell me where where I'm where I'm, I'm not thinking correctly. That uh, you have a structure that that. Uh, it shouldn't be there. It, it, uh, it it's, it's, it, you, somebody just can't go and put uh, a structure on town property without uh, some permission. Uh, there is an insurance issue of, of, about it. And when they plow that with snow, where do they pile the snow? At the end of the road. All around the, the perimeter of the cul-de-sac. They don't, they don't put any up into the uh, cul-de-sac. How about when the, uh, when the contractor... Uh, uh, when it was a private road, did he did he put it? Uh, did he pile the snow? It was before. No. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was before we looked at. No. No, I, oh. I, personally, I don't think it belongs there. I don't think it should be there. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think the town is it becomes liable uh, where, where you've got uh, something that, that uh, shouldn't be there. We allow it. Uh, if, if there's a drinking party out there uh, around the fire pit, that shouldn't be allowed on town property. Uh, uh, no, my is opinion it, is it, it, it shouldn't be there. Uh, is it okay to respond? Sure, go ahead. Um, it's not a place for drinking parties. It's a place for families to gather um, on trick-or-treat, which is kind of, that's the place that's known around town. 
to, to come by, we set up tables where several neighbors come together to give out their candy from that location. People on Pandora, Ashcroft, we've even, we'll say, we don't even know these people. <laughs> nice to see you where you're from, from Haverhill visiting. So people from all over come. It's not about drinking alcohol or partying. It's, it's about coming together with young children, young families. And um, it was installed by a professional fire pit person. <laughs> Uh, there, there really isn't a way for a fire to extend beyond the circle because it's surrounded by keystone. Then there's like the side of the curving and then there's just road. Um, so there's really nothing that could catch on fire. You want to say well, that? Um, unfortunately, I think you, you probably understand that this, is, this would set a precedent that we can't have um, in the town. But that being said, listening to your story about the maintenance of a circle that didn't happen and you took things into your own hand and you shouldn't have to look out at an eyesore. Um, you pay your taxes. You have a beautiful street. You should have a nice looking cul-de-sac. I would expect that um, with the removal of the fire pit that we can work with you, the residents, to put something in place there that would be aesthetically pleasing and that perhaps you could still set up on Halloween without a fire pit unless it's in somebody's yard but i mean i love i love the story of your neighborhood i love hearing about that because that's what drew my husband and i to this town as well 30 years ago and i know exactly what you're talking about that you go out on halloween and people know which houses to congregate mm -hmm. at and they look forward to it every year and it, it's just going to have to change a little bit i um, think the thing that concerns us yes. is that for so long it's been there Yes, Police I understand. Have seen it. Firemen have seen it. We've had firefighters who have joined us by that oh. fire. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we've had a neighbor who, like I said, has brought this to the attention because otherwise, it probably well, wouldn't be in discussion right uh, now. Well, let me qualify a little bit, though. We've had, um, as in all small towns, we've had the retirement of the what I call the regime that brought us this far. Our building inspector retired. Our, our superintendent of the highways retired and became appointed now. And, um, and you know, as we change over, um, we are trying to keep better track of things and to be fair, you know, so that certainly if there's something like this somewhere else, we're going to be fair about it. But, um, you know, honestly, listening to your story and how you took care of it all those years, that was, that was great. I mean, there's nothing bad about that story. It's a great story. We just can't allow the fire pit to stay there. But um, personally, myself, I can't speak for the whole board, but I would like to very much work with you in choosing how this circle could look so that you can still congregate there on Halloween and um, things like that. I really appreciate that you worked that hard on it. It is beautiful. I did take a look at it. Mm -hmm. It just can't stay there. Yes. OK. Um, so after my counterparts have spoken, <clears throat> I was a big advocate I don't know if you guys are familiar where the end of Center Street is, down on the Boxwood line. It's down, Center Street goes to the very end and it turns into Boxwood. Yes. Okay. So when I first became a selectman, they had fire pits and they had grills. And the Boy Scouts put that together and they made a little camping area so when people go fishing, they can go in there, they can fish and you know put some grill, hamburger, whatever. So turn around, when I first became on the board, one of the issues where they wanted them to remove all that. And they gave the Boy Scouts permission to go in there and do all that. But now it became an issue where whatever, the neighbors started complaining and the neighbors didn't like it. There was cars in there. I guess people going in there late at night, et cetera, et cetera. So we tried working this all out. It didn't happen because, number one, the fire pit, an amber could go up and burn the trees and catch the fire on fire. A million different reasons. It became a liability issue for the town of Groven to have those there. If some, one of them was hot, someone can burn their hand. The fire chief said, no, no fire pits, no grills, they're going. Take them up to VC Park, put them up there, that's where they belong. So after a long period of time, we fought it, we couldn't do it. Very nice, a lot of people volunteered their time, did a beautiful thing. Things change. Mm -hmm. I was upset because I felt that it was put there by the Boy Scouts for a reason and we should be able to keep it. It, Like you said, it brings the people of Groveland in. Mm -hmm. Now people from Havel come in, I can't help that, but do we police it? I thought we could put something in, 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 in a, make a, an agreement or do something with signage or do something to let it stay. It couldn't stay. 
But to come back to what you're talking about, in Groveland, we have an adopter island. An adopter island is like across from a Chinese restaurant, my company, I put the buckets in, I adopt to that island. Yeah. Okay? You can adopt the island where you live, you can put the trees, you can prune them, you can do your flowers, you can do whatever you want. The only part of this whole thing that you're in violation with, unfortunately, is the fire pit. The fire pit, God forbid, an ember stays going, it gets out of there, and it burns a house down or starts a tree on fire or whatever. And I agree. It's been there for 11 years. The firemen have gone around. Like you said, the kids have gone there, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And you guys feel ripped off because it's gone on for 11 years. I get it. But let me go back another step. You had a highway supervisor that was appointed by the town of Groveland. We, as a board, could not tell that man anything. He was appointed. Elected. You as a tax... Elected. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Elected. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. Elected. <laughs> So you, residents of the town of Groven, could tell him what he needed to do, and he'd do it. So he was in the position to say, yeah, you can have a fire pit there. And we had no say over that. The, this board had no say. Now he has retired. We've now made an appointed highway supervisor. We are in charge of him, and we are responsible. So that brings the responsibility onto this board and the town of Groven for whatever goes on in there. But, but it would, I feel like because they went and spent money to make it, beautiful that with the removal we should try to work with let me, let them. They me just, shouldn't have to pay more money well, to adopt it. I mean... No, let me... I didn't say anything about money. I didn't. Okay. Let me finish. Okay. I think, thank you. So what I'm saying to you is... Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, I'm sorry. So we have the... We have now an appointed superintendent that falls under this board. So what I'm saying is... There is absolutely no reason, I don't believe there's any reason, you still can't have your Halloween parties, you still can't prune the bushes and do what you need to do there and keep the P-Stone. I don't think the P-Stone's going to hurt anyone, but we can figure that out. I think the only part of this thing is, is the fire pit is the issue. I do. And I think that it, that's where the liability falls in the town of Groven. I went there personally. I drove around it. I saw the burning bushes. I saw the, you know, it's kind of closed in. There's some tipped upside down chairs. They don't want to get wet, whatever. I mean... <laughs> I think if you guys went to the fire chief and you asked the fire chief, can we have this fire? He's going to say no. We did. Her husband actually did. He yep. said it was up to all of you. Really? Well, yeah, he didn't. Um, he didn't. <laughs> I, I, and I, I actually spoke with the chief. He wouldn't issue a permit over this board's decision. So right. he said if the board supported it, he would, but he's not going to issue a permit unless you guys okay. give so him the okay. Me personally, I think everything you're doing there is fine. I, I think everything that you've done there is great. I think it sounds good about the parties and what have you. I think the fire pit needs to go. I mean, only because of the liability end of things. I, and that's just have the Halloween parties. And maybe the only suggestion, like come back to what Ms. Castanella said, if you're going to have a Halloween party there and you're going to turn around and you want to have a fire pit for that night, that Pacific night, maybe you could call up and maybe you can get a, a one-day permit. I don't know how that works. I, I don't know. It's but not I mean, It's not an immovable structure. No. It's right. about, yeah. How about yeah. move, the moving a fire pit but into one of the neighbor's yards? Well, right, that's what, right. It's, it isn't a move. We've actually consulted somebody, and in order to move it, it will be destroyed. It's an $800 fire pit. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. I'm so sorry for, for what's Well, the happened. other thing, the other part of it was, and I don't want to be you know, smart when I say this, and I think Mr. Watson just said, it's like when Watson, everyone has a backyard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And why wasn't it put in the in the, someone's backyard to begin with, and everyone congregate at that house or whatever? You know, maybe. I mean, it was that falls on the, the the pressure of always being the host. Right. It falls on <laughs> the, uh, right. It was put there because right. the children are always they're riding their bikes. They're riding yep. their bikes. They're playing yeah. outside. Yep. So they're you know they're right. they're active in that in that area. You. So right. you know that was the reason. So you know I, I guess know. a question I would have too is. You know, are there any stipulations when a public space can be maintained by a private owner and there is some kind of transfer of ownership of a public space to a private individual or to a community? Does that ever happen? I don't know. Um, I would just, I would weigh in and just say that um, this road has been duly accepted by the town, which means the town is now responsible for maintaining the road, for plowing the road, and for and plowing any is about all they do. Right, but we because the front of the road we, is not maintained. Okay, but why don't we step back from that a moment? Because we have a brand new, I'm going to use the wrong title now. Highway superintendent. Super Thank you, Highway yeah. superintendent. I promise, apologize, ready, but um, I'm not used to the new title either because we've been elected for so long. But we have now an appointed position, and I think he's working really hard to get out and about. And I think that you'll find that there will be a good response to your concerns. I, kn I know we're just talking about the, be the frontage of sure. many of the new roads. When they put them in, it looks great at first, and then who's supposed to keep this up? I don't who's know the answer. The 
It's supposed it to be the town. To be okay, so then the town probably needs to take in that into account because I don't think the town has probably been doing that no, they across haven't. the boards. We, neighbors have each chipped in okay. many homes, $100 Good. each, to maintain the beginning of the street. Okay. So, so well, you've done, done it your neighborhood has done a lot more than its share of things, and I'd like to see that your neighborhood gets taken care of now as we try to rectify this situation, if you'll let us. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry for what has to happen, but we cannot have an open fire pit on the town property. This is such a, it's a huge precedent for the town. We just cannot do who, that. Who, ma who maintains the lift station? The what? The lift, lift station, uh, pump station at, uh, yeah. on... The uh, Groban Water seen, and Sewer. I think yeah. they might mow just enough to get in. No, they. I, I don't even believe they mow yeah. around that. So you the, have a neighborhood. The first house on the left, yeah. uh, Bridget Irving, I believe. I, she's usually the one mowing. Oh. It's been a community effort to yeah. maintain whatever public space. No, I, what I meant was, if there's a, if there's a problem uh, uh, at the at the lift station, the, uh, the, the, the the town would be responsible. It wouldn't fall upon the yes. neighbors uh, in the neighborhood to. I assume uh, so. To, to repair that, we've, um, we've accepted we pay the road. taxes and we pay a water bill. So my assumption is that the right. town would. I'd be shocked if the residents had mm -hmm. to. So, you want to say that? Go ahead. No, so, go ahead. what happens to a lot of these developers is developments, not developers, but the developer goes and does the entrance. He puts the bushes in. He makes it look beautiful while the houses are selling. When he he keeps it up until the houses are finally <laughs> sold, and he he leaves, and then you guys sit there and say, well, who's going to take care of this? But no, not normally, I don't know, and I'm only saying I, don't, I can't speak on the new superintendent, but I can tell you on the old superintendent, he never took care of any entrances in town. I mean, the, on Center Street, there's an island where Harvard and Yale is. I mean, that grass used to go this high, and all the neighbors would go out there and mow it. You know what I mean? They used to take care of it. Yeah. And then once in a while, the highway would go over there and take care of it, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's something we're going to have to address with the new highway super. If that's something that we can, you know, it's going to grow the town's budget, it's going to grow taxes, or whatever, but if that's what the town people want, that's what we're going to do. Well, so according to Nevi and the bylaws, that yep. were, when they were submitted and at the time John Stock was on some committee, that, yep. uh, so we're getting some information that's, that's yep. you know, from 20 years ago, but, or 15, but um, that the town was to be responsible for the beginning and end, okay. and that because it was town right. property. Right. right. Okay. Um, but literally in 11 and a half years, I've never once seen But I don't, I don't, maybe they'll mow it or whatever, but I don't think they they're going to. mow it. No, no, I'm yeah. saying maybe oh, oh, that's maybe the responsibility. Will. I don't think they're responsible for putting flowers in and no, no, shrubbery no. and pruning shrubbery and all that. I don't think that's, but mowing maybe the circle and mowing maybe the entrance. I don't know. That's, I don't want to say yes, no, or maybe until we have that conversation with the super, the super. Yeah. But um, the last piece of it I was going to say is, um, if we allowed every neighborhood, in, every neighborhood in the town of Groven to do this, what have fire pits throughout all these neighborhoods? You know what I'm trying to say? Well, that's and why I'm asking the question as, is there something that we can look into or can we have a look into it further in terms of is there an option for us as a private community to take over responsibilities for the middle of the cul-de-sac as liability. a community and mm -hmm. take over the liability of it? That, so the town would not be liable for that. Since no one seems to know the answer, I don't know the answer, I, you know, right. so... Is that something that we can look into further and follow up with you on that? Instead of just bulldozing so it down. What they're talking about, do you know if that's anything that's possible? No. No. It's, it, it's part of the roadway. So it was accepted by town meeting as part of the roadway. But is, there, of the is that something we can look into, though? I'm not sure how you would look into it. Um, there's, it's not something that we allow people to buy the center of a public roadway, because that still is considered the public roadway. Um, if you want to, as a, as a group of residents, take back Stonebridge Road and make it your own private association and, ha and maintain it fully and maintain that, then that's something that this board could certainly discuss. Um, but then we wouldn't do any maintenance to that road plowing, sanding, salting, um, sweeping. Um, yeah. And you could potentially take back the entire road and form your own association. I think that would be the most that could be done because it is um, the center of the public road, which is, in essence, the roadway. So... The Wait, highway soup is point. here. Uh, I think you're going to have to go up to the podium or come up if you want well, to sit in the chair. Before you speak, just say one they need to understand. In order to accept a road, it goes through a town meeting. I would say probably to unaccept a road, you need 200 people at a town meeting to think it's a good idea as well. Just okay. make sure that's on, Rennie. So we would. Rennie, you got to just say who you are. <laughs> uh, Rennie Carroll, highway uh, superintendent. 
the, the highway department would maintain any easements that we own at the front and any easements along, I know the sidewalks through most of your neighborhood, yeah. um, any property that falls in line for that along the, the grass strip of the sidewalk comes down to the owners to mow. So uh, yeah, even though- is, Yeah, that's taken care of okay. by all the owners that- Right, yeah. so as far as mowing of the street, it would just be the entrance easements that we own. Yeah. Um, anything else beyond that where the sidewalks are? Is, yeah, is no, the up. sidewalks are all We've taken care of individually. Right. I don't think anyone's ever worried about that. So the island at the very end, mm -hmm. we would mow and maintain that. No, and and yeah, the entrance no ways, <laughs> right, I know there's no grass now, but if there was trees that need to be pruned, mm -hmm. um, you know, shrubs that died that need to be replaced, stuff like that, we would maintain that. We would mow it if there was grass there. Um, but Can I, I ask why it was never, why it's never been maintained? I've only been, I've honestly only been here three months, mm -hmm. so I can't, I, I can't answer that question. But I know it will be maintained by us. Whatever changes we have to make, um, you know, in-house mm -hmm. will be done, and, and we will maintain it. You have a very, I agree with the board. You guys maintain, and I've, I've said this to everybody I spoke down there, you guys do a really nice job. I have no qualms with anything you guys do down there other than the fire pit that, <laughs> Again, is is a liability for the town, and that's that's kind of where I stand as well. Okay. Rennie, right. just a, a question. I, I know I know you've only been on board uh, two or three months, um, and do you uh, do the highway department do the sidewalks down there, or or will that be on their on their route? As far as plowing, no, the sidewalks. As far as clearing the sidewalks. That's what you say. They don't plow. No, they don't. The, the owner, the homeowner. Yeah. Yeah. Very rarely do the homeowners so even they, get to, uh, to that. So I mean, the, the usually sidewalk we don't have plow sidewalks. comes through. The sidewalk plows, they do. They have a route that's Main a lot of just downtown. School bus Mains, route. I believe, yeah. the school bus route, mm -hmm. and, and, and it doesn't, Stonebridge yeah. does yeah. not fall. Right. Uh, no. No. Now, you, you've been down there. I, I, I've been down there a few times, but it, I can't estimate how far is it in there to the uh, off the road to the cul-de-sac. Um, That'll be close to a mile. Yeah, three-quarters of a mile. Three-quarters of a mile, okay. About 44. All right, so it, it's... it's uh, uh, the students have to walk out to the end. It, it's not far enough to, to run a, where we require to run a school the bus. Street there, there's no sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. We we don't require to run a school bus into uh, Stonebridge. It's not far enough. Okay. The Thank elementary you. does. Hmm? The elementary buses the elementary do go up the street. Yeah. <laughs> the younger children. Okay. okay. Are you all set? Yeah. So. What does the board, do you want to extend them a little bit? Or, I mean, it sounds like Denise already understands that we can't really. My personal feeling would be that to start moving forward in a more positive direction. I think Rennie wants to, to work with you. We have to, we have to say the fire pit can't operate any longer. It's, it's, it's on the town land. Um, so that can't happen. Anything we can do, though, to mitigate um, anything in the removal well, let us know anything we can do because um, obviously your neighbor just took a lot of care of itself and and that's a good thing we don't want to squash that out and um, hope that you'll come back and I know you're already involved in the baseball leagues in the town I'm sure you'll get involved in a lot of other things too because we need to be involved thank you mm -hmm. right uh, Rennie I, I know you've looked at that fire pit down there is is there any in, in your opinion can that be moved He needs to speak into the microphone. Oh, we can't hear. The Are you going to grab this mic, Tess? He's good. So it's the way that the fire pit is put together, it, it would have to be destroyed, um, basically, to be removed. It's not something, it's not like a stacking type of wall. It's mason, masonry together. So you would essentially destroy it, taking it apart. Okay. It's not glued? It's not interlocked it, it, glued? It is glued, but it's... It, like I said, to rip, to physically get it apart, you, you need a piece of equipment in there to get it out. The, the neighbors couldn't get a, a, a bucket loader under there or a, a forklift to pick it up? We have who has that machinery look at it, and I've he been, said it would be destroyed. I've been out looking at I've been there several times. I physically have gotten out. We could get lucky. I mean, lightning does strike twice in the same place once in a while, but <laughs> it, it would be... Where? Very, <laughs> well, very, that would be something, though. It, it would, it'd be tough to have. In Thank my you. professional opinion, Thank you. more than likely not. Do we need to vote okay. on this? All right, so do we need a vote on this? I would say it's technically no. I mean, right. he's already issued his letter. I mean, if you want to extend a uh, extension, it, as yeah. of now, it's scheduled to be removed on Wednesday. 
by the highway department if it's not removed. Do you guys want another two weeks to do your investigation to see if you think there's anything that you can do? Any kind of, that would be appreciated, yeah. Sure. If I can, I have also extended that I'd, I, I could, the highway department will assist them in any way possible. Right. I have okay. extended that Point to of order. Um, the neighbors yeah. as well as in my second letter. I, I did anything I can do to help, I did extend that to them. Okay. Okay, so we're not voting anything here on extension, so we're letting I think Danny I just heard Denise say that it doesn't have to be voted on, right? Did you just but say that? We didn't, oh. He has issued a letter, right? right? And, and I didn't ask for it to be voted. I asked a question to Denise if it needed to be voted on, and she said she didn't believe so. All I was offering to the neighbors was to give them, they asked for, they asked for possibly another extension to see what they could do about removing, and that's all I was discussing at this point. You don't need more time to figure out how to remove it, do you? You, you're not trying to figure out how to remove the fire pit, are you? I'm just trying to get this clarified. What's my understanding is that you were trying to see if there was anything else possible as far as the transfer of ownership of the or use of this circle, right? That was your so endeavor. Initially, initially, yes. Yes. But okay. If the town is willing to assist us to at least see if lightning might strike. Oh. Twice, okay. Uh, prior, you know, uh, give us additional time. I don't know if you're available on Wednesday. <laughs> or before this destruction date of Wednesday, um, we would appreciate... Or if we can push that date out just to give us a little more time to see, yeah, to be and able to work together. Can I ask them the Road Commissioner a question? When I went out there and saw it, I believe it's about this high. Yeah. Okay? Well, a little higher. Yeah. And I believe it was pretty much a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, that being said, is the bottom concrete? I never looked in the bottom, but... Okay. There's a bowl in there that I believe right. is metal. Yep. Metal. Well, so what I'm saying months. is, what I'm saying is, you take a diamond saw, and you cut it with a diamond saw. You can cut it. <laughs> okay. No, but I'm just okay. going to suggest something. Yeah. You cut it with a diamond saw. You cut it in half. You take two halves of it out. You know, get a couple guys to roll it into the bucket and put it into someone's yard or whatever. I'm just suggest. I've done them. I've, mm -hmm. I've done it. Wow. You, they make diamond saws and they cut the blocks. When you go to put it back together, you got to put a mortar joint. You put mortar between the joint, you squeeze the pieces together, and you put a mortar joint. Uh, I, I don't want to see, if, if they do that, I don't want to see the, uh, any of the highway equipment going on to the private property to do that. If they, if they want to... It's, on, uh, it's, on, it's in the cul-de-sac. No, I'm not saying... He's no, saying, but you said <laughs> move, it, move it off the property. But I don't, I don't want to see the, the highway uh, vehicles going, uh, no, going off the, no, going off the no, road. No. Uh, not, now you, you end up in uh, re repair of any... No, uh, no. So no. When, when you do that, you're just going to leave it in, in, in front of somebody's house? Exactly. Whatever they discuss. But I agree with Ed saying I didn't mean to go re-erect it in someone's backyard or whatever. I would just mean get it out of where it is and put it wherever they tell you on the edge of the road or whatever, and they can deal with it or whatever. Just a suggestion. I mean, it's been done. So can we maybe push that Wednesday date out so we can figure out if we are able to move it where we want to move it? Because I don't think by Wednesday, no. Yeah, we're you not. Won't know. I, I didn't yeah. even know Wednesday was the date. We never. That's news to us. Okay. So. Um, there was a second letter that I I did I didn't get administrate. I administrated to nearly everybody in the cul-de-sac, but okay. I can I, certainly work with you from here and try and, like I said, we can we can work together and. Okay. I can assist you as best I possibly can. I can't promise you anything, but... But can we just not demolish it Wednesday? Give we us can, some time to figure out where it's Certainly. We can, ex okay. we can extend <laughs> that. Uh, Rennie, can, Rennie, can, we, do, can we do two like weeks? Yeah. Can we do two weeks? We can we, do, we, yes. Are you, we'll do four are you agreeable to that? Sure. From today. That's From today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for coming in. So the 24th. Okay. June 24th, just so everyone's aware. Okay, so moving down, what we have the um, discussion with Rennie Count, Highway Supervisor, to discuss the Highway Department matters. So if you want to come up, it'd probably be easy if you sit on the chair or whatever. You want to pull a chair up to the table, whatever you want to do, whatever's comfortable. You need a mic there, Rennie? you need Rennie. a microphone. <laughs> yeah. How about the podium? It might be easier to, uh, rather than to well, hold the mic. You can Thank pull you. a chair up to the table if you'd like. So these are just some of the, um, I know I've only been here about three months, but these are some of the changes or um, improvements that I'm looking to do for the highway department. Um, some of just the bullet points of um, some of our road paving.
projects that we'll be doing um, in-house as far as we all know from we're still kind of feeling the impacts of the 97 project um, so I believe we have a paver that was purchased by the old road commissioner that we'll be implementing to kind of improve our roadways um, until we can get funding uh, we'll also be doing a, a, a drainage project at the Washington Park that I think a few of you uh, might be aware of. There's a, um, an issue certainly in the winter time at that retention pond um, going down the hill at center at Washington was a, a big issue over the winter. I didn't personally experience it, but okay. from Bill Green's um, experience, it was a, a pretty dangerous situation. Uh, also working like a, a trying to form a relationship with the water and sewer department and helping them with uh, with a lot of their in-house projects long-term planning type of thing where we work as a DPW type environment which I think would be a great start for us um, I'm also going to be implementing the uh, excavation permits, we're, we're going to go online with these. I know you guys know Sam, the building inspector, has all his permitting online permit link. Mm -hmm. It's very seamless, much easier for us. We can track it. The fees will be $100, which is pretty standard from just about every city in town. Holds our uh, contractors responsible, also gives us a little revenue to fix up any issues on, on trenches that aren't taken care of by them also gives us a, a picket trail for them. We have a 60 day, a one year and a two year inspection. There'll also be some, um, some SOP they have to, you know, standardize by when they bring a trench back up to class A road. Another one of the long term plans, um, working with the town of George, uh, Georgetown with Peter Durkee trying to purchase a sweeper in house. This would obviously come out of my sweeping budget. Mm -hmm. It's a cost-effective way for us to be able to sweep more than once a year. The budget would probably be impacted less. Um, we were looking at a, a new one originally. It's kind of costly. We're looking at a remand one, which is about half the cost. It, it would, you know, it would give us the ability to sweep more than once a year. We could sweep for functions and and you know Memorial Day parades, stuff like that. Nice. I know that's. Since I've been here in the short time, people have said that's a, a, something they'd like to see more of. Um, also, the compost at the yard, at the city yard, is getting kind of overwhelming for us. It would be um, advantageous for us to maybe possibly start giving contractors the ability to purchase it from us with a, uh, with a $50 compost sticker. Huh. We have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of yard of compost sitting there and, and, and material that's going to be coming in. This is all of our brush and, and leaves and I mean it's just it never ends and a lot of the you know residents come up with pickup trucks and we have dumpsters full of it so okay. it's something that would help alleviate the cost of it as well. I think if we put out a good product we'd have more contractors that would be you know okay. looking for that type no, of uh, I, I, I thought the contractors weren't allowed to, to dump there now. No contractors are. I'm simply allowing contractors to pick up. They, they won't purchase. be able to dump. They'll only be able to purchase the sticker and then pick up and then get our compost, mm -hmm. which I'm going to, working with Bill Green, I'm going to make it a lot better product. Um, the next time we go out to have everything ground up, I'm going to have a tumbler come and kind of sort through some of the material because right now it's kind of a bonier byproduct. Uh, it's um, not really refined. <laughs> So, brick. Remember this: brick and farms, mm -hmm. Hamilton. Okay. They'll no, buy it. Oh, they'll yeah. buy it. Okay. They'll come in. I know exactly and what you're talking about. They'll come in and they'll they'll give you money for it. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's a lot of money, but right. they'll come in and they'll take. They'll, they'll take most. Of they it. do a lot of towns in this area. Oh, okay. So you can talk to them as well. Excellent. Um, as far as a long-term goal for our highway department, as you know, our. Uh, Residents in town is always looking for a higher level of um, service. I would like to put in the books for a junior operator somewhere down the line. 
plan, obviously we'd have to budget this with Denise. Mm -hmm. um, we're constantly extending services and we don't have the, client, uh, the, the, the employees in place really to cover them. I mean, we have a right. mow crew that's, as you know from tonight, that our mowing is getting more and more extensive with our fields and our developments. And so somewhere down the line, we should look into possibly coming up with a junior operator. I know it was something that uh, Bob Arkelly and I kind of advocated for. Well, yes, we're using really highly paid, um, highly skilled workers to mow, mow exactly. the grass. And, and, that, and we shouldn't be. Right. We, should we be. don't have the ability to have a summer program anymore from my understanding. Um, summer employee, yeah, because that's because temp. We have to do unemployment then, right? right. Correct. So yeah. you, you basically end up paying them. Correct. You have to have the, the backing of a full full time. Yeah, employee. we've been back and forth. Right. So. Yeah. But I, I do think if we had a junior operator that could take over the mowing for the summer, you know, a younger kid that you can bring up through the ranks, mm -hmm. um, save us a lot of money and you know open up the avenues for our higher, more skilled personnel to take on those bigger projects and have right. them finish them, you know, a lot time later. Um, and my final is just kind of the paving projects I have in line for this year. Um, the Center Street realignment project right at the uh, Atwood Estates. That road's going to be lowered. Uh, the gas company already completed their work there. Um, they lowered the gas main, so they're going to be, there's a hump as you come into that estate. I'm sure Bill can test to this because he's right there. Okay. Um, that road's going to be realigned. The, the, I think they're going to lower it about two and a half meters or one and a half meters, something like that. And it's also going to be pushed towards the angle of the road. So better sight line, it'll be safer. Oh, okay. We're going to pave about 750 feet. That whole section of road will be reclaimed. It's actually a really bad section of road on Center Street. Oh, so it's part of that development we're going to have the, the develop developer is going to yeah, handle? The developer is going to handle all the um, grading and the reclaiming of the road, and then we're just going to pay for the pavement. Okay. Um, this, these are all in Chapter 90 now. Yeah. Um, the other one will be Gardner, Gardner Street from Elm Park to King. It's also something um, Bob <coughs> kind of had on the books from last year. And then uh, as a final project this year will be uh, Seven Star from Broad to Wood Street. Um, I also have uh, Brandon Holmes from Unique Materials going to be doing a demo this week for us for a paving uh, maintenance program that I know we don't have. Okay. It's kind of a cheap and effective way. It's like a crack selling program, but you can really implement it in-house. You don't need big, you know, heavy equipment. You don't need, you know, five or six guys doing it. A couple of guys can do it. Um, I actually did it in Portsmouth. We did a demo in Portsmouth, and when he does the demo, he's actually going to leave us a product to kind of sample, um, and then we'll see the results and implement it from there. So it'll kind of be a test bed for us this year, and then in the fall or possibly next year, we may purchase some equipment for further use. And that's about it. That's an ambitious so plan. <laughs> does anyone want to go ahead, Ed? Now, Ray, uh, one thing I think is important, but I don't see it on your list. Mm -hmm. Uh, is uh, the discharge of water from a residence onto the public way, uh, whether it be they're pumping out a solar or a swimming pool or something like that. Uh, I, I, I see it in, in all over town, and I, I think, um, especially like in the early, early, early spring, mm -hmm. it creates a hazard with uh, where it freezes Those over. Heavy rains, they have water, water in their basements. Yeah. And pumping. Um, I know Denise has already kind of written a, our IDD. Yeah, we just passed an illicit discharge yeah. at our town no. meeting. Town okay, meeting. so that's part of the MS4 All right. that we're working on and working with planning, and we have a second phase that's going to come. Second phase or third phase? Uh, yeah, we've been working on it for several years. Yeah. So I spearhead the MS4 permit, and okay. that's why we did. Um, we'll have another bylaw next year for the continuation of it, but the illicit discharge has been passed and allows us now to fine um, residences that are pumping into the public roadway that's creating a safety hazard. Uh, and, and, and it is. I, mean, I particularly like uh, number three on your list here. Uh, I mean, that, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. That uh, you, get, you, get a, you get a contractor, they, 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 they dig a trench, they don't properly fill it, it, it becomes a crater. Uh, and there was one that, uh, that the water department was involved in up on uh, uh, Salem. Salem Street by Price Wright Garage to that new uh, house that was beside there. Yep. Uh, and I know, I think the highway went up there and, and filled it in a little bit. a few times. Uh, but uh, to me, it, that, that's not the responsibility of our highway department to be going around and filling those. You know, they, they need to be properly filled. 
uh, whether they need to be infrareded at the end or uh, uh, something to keep them. Uh, and and I, I even think that when they do that, they should be uh, below the, uh, the hot top. They, they, they should be concreted. Uh, I know uh, compacted, but concreted. And bring, and, uh, even on these uh, collector roads, they should be brought up to Class A road standards as far as filling the trenches. Correct. That's what Is I'm that unreasonable? On. That's what I'm working on. Okay. That's, uh, it's baby steps. I'm going to start implementing this. I'll write my own SA, um, SOP so they have standards that they have to adhere by. Notifications, the biggest part, no one notifies anything. It's kind of like the wild, wild west. They come in, they get a permit, they go about their business. I'm not notified. No one, you know, no one really knows what's going on. So, and, and nobody inspects it afterwards. Make Correct. sure it's done properly. Correct. So that's the part of the notification is knowing when they're going to be working, when they're going to be finishing, when there's a. That's why I'll have like a 60-day, a one-year inspection, and then a and then a two-year inspection, and it will all. Yeah. I did this. Um, in Portsmouth, I mean, they had some of this in place, but a lot of the standards need to be brought up because that's people, they're trying to make money, they're rushing around, and well, they and, forget and a lot about, of steps. Um, you know, I, I, didn't, I don't see anything in here, um, unless I missed it under three, but uh, right after they get done, um, finishing the, uh, before the 60 day, the, the one year, the, the highway department ought to be sending somebody out to just to take a look at it to make sure mm -hmm. that it's filled properly. That'll be part of it when they, when they're on the street working, they'll, they'll have to, there's a link that they'll have to hit when they're doing their, when they're doing their initial dig. So that, that's why we have a 60 day and so we can inspect it periodically. Okay. Thank you. And I, I know the gas company is a, one of the biggest offenders. Oh yeah. They always have been. Well, I'm, I'm impressed. I, I like the fact that you have a, a list that you're, you're running after already, mm -hmm. so that's great. You're not waiting for everybody to come forward and complain. You're trying to get ahead of that, so right. I, I think that's a good thing. Um, I did have a question, and it kind of goes back to what you said when we were discussing what happened on the Stone Ridge Road, that yep. you've been going around and reviewing the roads and getting familiar with them. And um, so you might have seen um, the Seven Star intersection with the telephone pole in the middle of the road perhaps not oh um at governor's yes yes it has been brought to my attention i'm looking yes. i i it, i talked to denise about this i so i, I want to put something there i, I ideally we want to move the pole yes i agree that's not going to realistically happen anytime May in the near future well can i just <clears> say <throat> something about that whole thing because mm -hmm. i've i've been in town like about 30 years and that's the usual response when it's moved, but this is a huge safety issue, and I really oh, yeah. feel like we should um, really push hard to to move that pole because no matter what you put around it right now, bumpers, deflectors, <coughs> um, it's, it's, it's not safe. just <clears throat> so dangerous, and it just should not be there. And I know when they, we redid the downtown, the Elm Park, um, somehow we managed to get it so not all the wires were going back and yep. forth all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So perhaps um, if we really... Uh, I'll certainly look into it. I'll work with the um, electric right. light department and see where if, we can go. Well, if we can make a... If maybe the Board of Selectmen can issue a letter about that safety yep. issue. I don't know if you two have seen what I'm talking about. I think it's a huge the safety issue. The only way issue. you're going to do it is you've got to put one pole on the other side of the road and the other pole on the other side of the road. You can't just do it with one pole because right. of the, the It's length. too big of a span. So they have to okay. put two poles in to get rid of one. Yeah. Well, that that's safer than one pole in the middle of the road, right? Any idea who owns that pole? That uh, is Groban or that uh, the telephone? I believe it's one of our poles. Oh. I believe it is. Oh, even more reason to get so, it moved. I mean, I you could have a conversation with the light yep. department foreman there, or whatever. Absolutely. Yep. Kevin. Yep. Snow. Yep. Okay. Good. And and I like the idea of the um, sweeping of the roads a little more often. Um, makes everything look better, and it's not that labor intensive, is it? Once we have a machine. No, right. once we have a machine and they're maintained a little more, um, we have Hawkeye in. He's he, he's great at his job. He does a great job. But yeah. I literally have him going down roads like two or three times because they're that bad. When you only sweep them once a year okay. and you have deteriorating roads, pitted roads like we do, the sediment builds up really quick. And you, it was 
someone actually mentioned it to me today when they were sweeping the road. It actually looked like they were grinding it because there was dirt, you know, and he had, had to make a couple passes to get it to go away. Okay. So, so when, when you say working with Grove, Georgetown, I mean, do you mean that we might share it with them? That's my plan is okay. that we have a shared. I like um, that. West Newbury and Newbury do it. Okay. Um, it'll come down. I talked to Denise about this. We'll have some legal ramifications that we have to put on paper and because I believe only one of us can own it, so then it'll come down to, you know, we pay the first six months, they pay the first, oh, okay. or we pay the first year, they pay the second. We'll have to work out those. But now that I've looked into it a little further, getting um, a used or refurbished piece of equipment, it's only um, six or seven years old, but it's completely refurbished, they warranty it, and it's well within our abilities to, to purchase that. Oh, in conjunction okay. with Georgetown, and it would fall well under our, or right in with our budget with the maintenance and the upkeep of it, versus outsourcing it. Can, can so, I ask what that cost would be? Because we're only paying $10,000 a year currently. So, the when we originally looked into the new one, the expense was, it was significantly over our budget. <clears throat> the refurbished one's about half the cost. So, it would come down to um, less than... Fifteen, maybe eighteen thousand dollars a year, for for uh, how many years? It would be. I think 10? it's a seven, seven year. I think it's a seven year um, lease. So just a reminder, and for the board, um, town meeting has to authorize any leases. Correct. So that's required to go to town meeting. Correct. That's why I'm, I'm yep. bringing it up to them now. Okay. I mean, we're swept this year, so it's not. It's for, you know, a, a medium term or long term planning. Even if we got it in the next couple of years, um, like I said, it would it would certainly come out of the highway budget. <clears throat> Wouldn't be part of the capital improvement plan because that sweeping comes out of my budget anyways. But it would be a capital improvement item. Right. It meets the requirements, so it is a capital <laughs> right. improvement item. Yeah. Might uh, okay. save save money in, in the long run. That's my plan. And also upgrade our service. Right, Which is, I'm sure, all our residents pay pretty good taxes around here. Uh, I yes. think they'd appreciate it. Are you all done, Kevin? Yeah, I am. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Rennie, a couple things. Um, okay. I'll go down the list. So, you guys already purchased the paver. Correct. And you're going to turn around and do some smaller jobs around town or whatever with the paver. Mm -hmm. um, you're pretty paper, confident. Right? That seven, seven style will be... Um, probably on that list. Okay. Because I so, know there's pots of seven saw that yeah, are really impassable. You're pretty confident that you will be able to have the crew that you have be able to do that, train them and all that. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'll be running the paver and, and. So, that being said. And those guys will get trained. It's roughly what a couple hundred thousand dollars, a couple hundred dollars a ton. Or maybe not with the town. Maybe less with the it's, town. I think 60? it's about sixty-eight bucks or seventy dollars oh. a ton per ton. Spread. <clears throat> So are you going to be able to buy the, the top? Yep, to be we'll able be able to, to buy the product. We have throw the Throw in there trucks. cheap enough yep. that it doesn't, so you'll be able to save, at the end of the day, you're going to be able to save us money. Correct. Okay. That's my plan. Okay. All right. So then moving down the list, we have the environmental water department helping them dig. Makes sense if we're going to go toward a DPW, but their union, you're still union. Um, probably going to have a conversation with them before we make any promises or do anything because it's Correct. not being done right now, and we are going to hopefully go down toward a DPW anyway. Correct. So before we move too far fast forward, we need to yep. um, have a calm conversation on that one. Correct. Uh, moving That's down why I have in parentheses long-term planning. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> Very long. I agree 100% on yeah. um, number three. I mean, obviously, we need to go out there and inspect when the backfilling and layers mm -hmm. and compaction and all that good stuff so that we're not having sinkholes. That, that makes sense. Um, the the, the uh, sweeper, if you're paying ten grand a year, and if if you were to able to get it to three <coughs> times a year um, yeah. by owning ours, but I wouldn't be looking for. And I heard you say it, you're not looking for a new one, but whatever number I would be involved in would be a number that makes sense, a good piece of equipment Correct. that we're not going to be going from ten grand, ten k a year to twenty k a year. It fluctuates too. It's it's ten grand. It's somewhere in around there every year. He usually, I think, he bills us by the hour. So it's right, and I agree with what you're saying. I've seen I seen him out sweeping, and I, and I've seen areas where he had to go by two and three times. I get that, and okay. what you it makes sense. But I'm saying purchase wise, if we can get someone of a subcontractor, so 
if he if we hired him again for another three or four days versus buying a machine i just don't want to i want it to make sense at the end of the day i want us to save money and make sense that's Absolutely. all i'm saying on that item there um i will certainly work the numbers if right it, right i'm sure you're if that come doesn't back to work us then talk to us anyway right. about all that <clears> stuff <throat> anyway i mean it, it wouldn't it's happen in, this it's budget in its season. infancy right now right um the the, the the compost makes sense i mean the reason the gates are at the co at the highway garage right now is because they didn't want contractors in there they they put the gate up taking salt and sand dumping right. leaves whatever i mean um the gate's going to be open to let people come in there. that's going to be another issue how are you going to control that permit whatever phone call to you guys and say we're coming down schedule it that's all but i mean it does make sense if you can bring some money in yep. personally 50 dollars a load's cheap you can't buy compost for a six wheel load of compost it's 300 bucks right so that's cheap but anyway um junior operator makes sense if you need the help i mean um if, if it's going to help and you can get more projects done it makes a lot of sense i guess again absolutely happen this budget season anyway because we don't have it budgeted right but going forward that's great um and then the paving projects um reclaim yep that's fine so what um let, let's just go back to what those the residents were in here mm -hmm. and this is only one because i know when you're going down center street toward my shop there's an island there mm -hmm. and the island was about this tall okay for whatever reason i don't know what the reason is it was never mowed okay for whatever reason so i was down there a few weeks ago mowing some guy's house and the guy said to me listen the town doesn't mow that do you mind going over there and mowing that i'll give you the extra whatever it is to mow it i said no oh, whatever i'm here not a big deal i truly think that you need to as a supervisor to go around the town and look at some of these islands they're not being taken care of okay. as far as that kind of stuff yeah, and I don't. I understand you can't do every little thing, but I just personally think that some of these areas. That oh, if we're responsible, past, we if we're responsible for and, it, we need to be responsible. That's right, all. We need to be after it. Absolutely. I, can't, I agree. People shouldn't be putting fire pits in them, right. uh, and what have you. But and I don't think we're in the business of putting flowers. Right. I, I have said to you before. There's a maintenance level that we should be establishing right. for right. islands and roadsides, and that's it. Right. Should be Denise, standardized. Denise in the past has given donated i've donated my men's time to go downtown groveland right. put the flowers in etc and, and i this year i'm just i'm too busy you guys i saw went down yeah. and cleaned it up and what have you and yep so i mean we'll take care of it a downtown area i personally i would became a second i was the one that put the flowers on the poles mm -hmm. denise work and i work together in that looks we really great should have a beautiful downtown when you pull in absolutely there should be flowers at the clock there should be flowers under the pavilion and we should make the place look good absolutely um that's just me i'm not speaking on behalf of the board um so what other th stuff have you since you've been on the three months what have you done where have you gone like a, kind of a quick overlay of wh what's going on and so what have you. i've been have been doing a lot of the road inventory so okay keeping aware of what projects will be coming up in the near future we still have some monies that we're going to be paying out this year from our chapter 90 um with the 97 with the route okay. 97 project so that kind of dilapidates us a little bit this year Okay. Um, but there are sections of Center Street and uh, sections of Seven Star that need yep. okay. immediate attention. Yep. So that's where our paver comes in. We'll yep. do, be able to do it the cheapest. You hire a big company. They only do. They'll only come here for a certain amount of tonnage. So they yep. won't do these smaller projects. I got you. So it's something we can do in house. We can ex kind of extend the life of the road <coughs> until we get the funding. To and okay. honestly, they need to be reclaimed. Where that's a huge it. expense for the town to take on. It's like almost double the cost of right. grinding and paving or coal. So you've worked on the inventory of the roads. <clears throat> doing a lot of road yeah. inventory. Yeah. What else? Has, what um, else? Also, like I said, the as I issue permits, there's no money coming in, so that's something I have been working on changing. Okay. Um, we have to get you know a standardization so we can keep after contractors. You know, yeah. Bill's called me on. Hey, did you hear about the bike that almost went off the road at the end of Salem Street? So mm -hmm. being able to keep after these contractors is a huge part of um that process mm -hmm. um also you know working with planning um in the complete streets um I'm, we're gonna i think we have a, a meeting scheduled towards the end of this month with um tony from um the M i forget where he's from but we're, okay. we're gonna we're gonna have what a meeting on planning that. commission yes no he's from stan no, he's, tech yes yeah, so right yeah. now you've been doing the complete streets yep okay uh, okay and what finding, else is it and also finding some trying to get on the tip program for some of the larger projects like that route 97 project that okay. we really took it on the chin trying to 
over the past four or five years trying to fund that. Um, it would be a lot, a lot better for us if we had some federal funding behind us. Okay. Could, have I you just, gone for any grants? Or you try I haven't. I'm just looking into it now. What, That's okay. part of the meeting. Could you just clarify, what is this, um, I may hate to quote, take it on the chin, what went wrong here? That it, it's just a, it was, it was a very costly, the Route 97 projects, putting in sidewalks. The that, sidewalks, right. Putting in the sidewalks, taking the, um, repaving the roads, that was just a big project for us. We had to guarantee some, so we've used our <coughs> Chapter 90 money for several years yes. to just that one road, to which is why other roads right. in towns have pay not been paved because it all went for. All even, th even this year we have some so money in engineering. Because I thought that was presented <coughs> to us as a, some kind of a special grant that we got and that let us do that, but obviously that no. didn't really cover it all. Not all No, of I it. just wanted to get that clarified. Yeah. So the special grant did not cover all the work that we really needed to do to get that Correct. Done. We paid for the engineering, engineering work on it. Okay, and that's yeah. a lot of money. Yes. Correct. Yes, great. So talk about the 97 project. Have you ever gone to that um, contractor about getting that equipment out of there or anything? I have left several messages with Joe. Um, he did come and get the dozer last week. I wish I had f gotten a hold of him. I saw him when he was doing that at that time. I've since that time, I've called him twice and had zero response. Sounds He's good. also the gentleman that we are receiving the paver from, which um, I think that that's also been sitting there for however long. So. But he's, so, he still has his have you grader, and the ten wheel is still right. sitting there. <coughs> Actually, made a letter, wrote a letter to him, and I don't have his address. Uh, the only thing I have is the cell number that um, Mr. <laughs> Arakanian gave me. So, so now I, it's ours. well, I'm sure we have the address of where we sent the <laughs> payment. <laughs> okay. So maybe we can we can address have a letter. Send a letter yep. and Certainly. get a letter. Certainly. Um, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't. So you got the tip uh, program. Uh, yep. Also the. Um, I'll be working with the, with the uh, MS4 stuff, and we have that second phase coming through, so I've been doing a lot of research on that, too. Okay. Um, and also, you know, trying to find ways to obviously get more out of our highway department. Well, downtown, I know that we have that gazebo there that I want to yep. put a couple benches out there and kind of spruce it up, paint it. Yeah. Oh, nice. um, you know, just kind of, it hasn't had any attention. I know there's one bench there, I think. Oh, we paint it. We paint it every <coughs> couple of years. Oh, so we? we actually put a lot of money on that gazebo. Okay. So, but the, and, the but I know there's one bench there. And yeah, so I'll, I'll probably, yeah, that's what Bill was telling me. So I think mm -hmm. we'll, we'll definitely try and get another bench mm -hmm. out there. If we can't mimic that one, we'll get two new ones that kind of, yeah. like I said, dress it up we a can, little bit. I have a quote for the company that built the original one. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Okay. Um, and speaking great. on that, um, not just that my name is done, but. Um, Dunn's Farm up in West Newbury. Mm -hmm. He was in the office a few weeks ago, and I used to get all the flowers from him. And okay. um, no relation, believe it or not. Okay. Probably third down the road somewhere. But <laughs> I used to get the flowers, and he used to pay the town. We okay. pay him for them. But he was in the other day saying, what's going to happen? I said, I'm not doing it this year. So he was saying, well, tell him to come down, and, you know, I got geraniums or whatever. Okay. I'm not saying that's the only place to go, but it would be look nice into to it. throw some color in. Yep, absolutely. Um, but that's, you know, there. So is there any big projects that you, I know you talked about the Washington Street drainage yep. thing that was kind of left over from the past road commissioner? There's also the, the Salem Street culvert. That, that's something we'll be looking into uh, funding for as well. But you don't, but you may not get it going this year. No, it, it's, so what I'm it's trying to, ultimately right. two or three years down the road. Right. When you so look, look into funding, it takes quite a while to get on that, there. That's the one by the Haverhill, near the Haverhill line? Correct. No. No. It's no. the one by Washington, Washington Street. Yeah. Washington yeah. Street. We're required it's by the, the end of this one. year to have the engineering. We have to have a disaster plan in place for that culvert. Yeah. So we have to have so, engineering work done this year. So we have to. Because um, yeah. there has to be a plan if that were to fail, how we would divert traffic and what we would do in that instance. So what I'm trying to do, what, what I'm asking is um, projects that we can look forward to this year is all I'm asking. That's the, the ones I listed. Yes. Because right. our Chapter 90 is a little limited because we're still paying, I think it's 100, 106000 we're paying for uh, the so. engineering. Yeah. So we still have almost half or it, right. at so, least half of our right. uh, so, Chapter 90 money coming out of that. And then even with, I'll be using a rough guesstimation, thirty or 40000 of my own budget just to get those projects done. Right. So all I'm trying to do, and I'm not trying to mm -hmm. pick on you, no, but okay. let the town people Pick know. On. 
every year you hear, well, the roads aren't getting paved. We don't have enough roads paved. Roads are falling apart. Right. So I'm just trying to get so the town people understand. Right. We have $106,000 going out to pay for a previous project. Correct. We're limited on funds this year to do our paving. Correct. Okay. Um, so we're up front and, and on and that's And that's why having that Bob on his exit strategy, getting that paver was actually a really good idea. He didn't know I was coming here, and I've run them before, and I'm... Mm -hmm. Okay. Won't say I'm an expert, but I'm pretty good with a paver. Mm -hmm. um, so that will certainly help us, like mm -hmm. I said, getting through next winter, um, kind of rejuvenating our roads. Like I said, the, mm -hmm. the bad areas on 7 Style, we all know. Um, there's some spots on Center Street that are down to gravel. Yep. We'll put okay. Band-Aids on them. So That's all we can do. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't done yet. I'm trying oh, to, okay. I'm trying to oh, finish up. I'll, I'll, do, okay. I'll go quick. Um, so the big project, the... the Bigger project we can't really get going this year. We don't have anything big other than stuff that's already in the pipeline. Right, we don't have any funding. Now that it. you've been in for a few months, do you feel comfortable about the budget you have now? And have you looked at the snowplow budget? I haven't looked at the snowplow budget. It seems that we're always kind of transferring money mm -hmm. out of the, or we're upping the snowplow, um, the winter operations. Mm -hmm. So I think. You know, long term, maybe we just bolster that budget a little bit. I mean, if there's money in the end, at the end of the year, we can always move it down. I think it's mm -hmm. sometimes better to have a surplus than to be pushing money right. towards it. Mm -hmm. But that's that's my experience. Okay. So the your regular operating budget, have you been able to go through it to get a comfortable feel? You're good with that number? You're not good with the number right now? Because I haven't gone a full fiscal year, okay, it's tough to judge. I know okay. uh, coming in, I was right. rubbing nickels together to get through the rest of the season, but mm -hmm. that's usually how most and cities and towns. Some of the projects yeah. and, already... and honestly, at this point in time, that's how most cities and towns are. Um, the last couple months, it's mm -hmm. you know, feast or famine. Christmas okay. in July. That's okay. what we wait for. Go ahead, Kathy. <clears throat> okay, are you, I wanted to make sure. Are you done now with everything that you wanted to go through? I just. I'm I done. Okay. I wouldn't have said it if I wasn't. Okay, okay. I just um, I just wanted to make sure that um, people that might watch this would understand that um, he has a fairly aggressive list here. I think for walking into the job and a lot of um, stuff that he's going to try and bring in house to help maintain and uh, and repair roads that we might not be able to pave right away, but we can certainly get them in better condition. Um, so I guess what I'd be looking forward to at some point would be to see some kind of a, at least a short-term plan on the roads, but I would give you some time on that mm -hmm. to maybe come into us and say, okay, this is what I think for the next five years that we should start looking at. Yep. Um, we used to kind of do our road planning that way, but we also used to run a capital exclusion override to fund it. and. Um, that would Given, be something I'd like to see come back, actually. Um, well, I was going to say, I'm not, we just passed a fairly high override for a brand new school building. And yeah. um, I'd like to see if we can somehow do the, the capital exclusion, uh, not as an exclusion, and try and do it underneath the cap. Um, yeah. See if we can get creative about that funding somehow. Um, we might be able to, if we give it a little time and work on it. But I'd certainly like to see your ideas on... Um, the road maintenance program, get that up and running again, how, how many roads and when. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right, thanks. Bill, can I just make a few quick comments? Oh. Um, so, Rennie, just so you know, um, your item three and five, anything that requires a permit fee, this board has to vote. So if you're going to propose a $100 permit fee for Correct. street openings, it has to come back before this board. Okay. Um, same thing with the compost um, sticker. This board would have to actually formally vote on that. So we have to um, put that on the agenda for next time? Yep. Okay. Yep. I feel um, pretty sure we'll say that. <laughs> and so just keep in mind, come September-ish, we will put out the capital improvement request. Mm -hmm. um, some of your items, so the street sweeper, when it ever happens, would be a capital improvement item. Same thing with a backhoe. Yep. I'm not sure what the cost of that would be, um, but that would be required to go on the capital improvement plan. And I know you have some equipment that's been pushed down the road. Um, Absolutely. So you may want to look at some of that to prioritize what... Yep. Because Obviously, everything can't be funded at once. And in that backhoe, I, I, I see that a few years out because we'll be working with the water and sewer. We'll probably have to wait and see what the superintendent that comes in here wants to do, what his game plan is, and I'll have to form a relationship with him to get there. Okay. So that's all wishful thinking. Okay. Um, 
So that's it. I just wanted to make those few All comments. Right. Anyway, Thank you. Uh, just on, on number five, just, just mm -hmm. quickly, yep. um, uh, you alluded to, uh, uh, to alleviate, alleviate the uh, swelling pile and offset the cost of making compost as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's something that uh, we could do a revolving account to, uh, uh, to, uh, so that the money would actually go back to, um, to, to the highway for uh, hiring the, uh, the company to come in and compost, not uh, uh, chip up all the brush and stuff. Yep. Uh, obviously, you're spending fuel for, uh, to pack, uh, pack the pile. Uh, so, you know, you could, you could shave a little bit off, off of that. Offset the cost. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, I what I'm looking, that's all I'm looking to do with that. So I, I think that, uh, and, and even maybe if, depending on how much you get, to help pay for the, the guys that are, uh, are working there. Yep. And I, I think the only way Absolutely. to do that, make sure it comes back, is some kind of a revolving account. Maybe you could talk to Denise about. Uh, yeah. So that uh, would require a town meeting. So, so that so wouldn't so be able to take <laughs> place until okay. town meeting. So next fiscal year, July so we'd have to wait until 2020. Don't think about everything you want to do, has to go to town. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm here now. Yeah. And I, so didn't, the same I didn't thing, wait. Yeah, so the same thing I know you mentioned with the street opening. So that $100 does not go back into the highway budget it's to general use. Fund it's general fund money. money. I, I knew that. Yeah. That's okay. At least someone's getting the money. Yeah. Okay, does anyone have anything else? No. Okay, well, I think we're all set. Awesome. Thank you for thank coming you in much. and filling us in. Right, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, you too. So now we're moving on to the Route 113 speed limit. Um, so this was really just to bring you guys back up to speed with where we stood with um, a matter that started back in 2014. Um, if you see from the correspondence, um, the chief has been talking to MassDOT. Uh, they feel that the speed limit, uh, back in 2014 we had asked to extend the, um, I think it's 25 miles an hour, which starts just after King Street back to the fire station and bring it back so it was a longer stretch in front of the town complex and the Pines. Um, the state feels that the speed limit that's currently out there is adequate. Um, so the chief just wanted to let you know that he was working on this and if you know how you feel about that, if you want him to continue working on something, maybe either continue to push for a change in the speed limit or maybe change some signage out there. Um, just because it's sort of been discussed for the last few years. And um, again, it was just to sort of bring you back up to speed with where things stand. Okay. Yeah, um, I read through the correspondence and I can't remember which one it said, but it talked about um, some of that mitigating circumstances perhaps that we hadn't brought up to their attention. And I, thinking about um, the River Pines now becoming a real recreational center for the town. And as you come from downtown, it's kind of a a bit of a blind curve there, you know, like sort of a child was trying to come across with a bicycle or things like that. You wouldn't really see that um, when you're outside the 25 mile an hour zone. <coughs> Am I got that right? I was kind of paying attention to come by the manor drive and you're trying to make that turn and then there's the River Pines and... You, you're talking the Pines Recreation, not yeah, River yeah. Pines, Pines. Yeah, I'm sorry, Pines that's Recreation. Okay. Let me correct that. Pines Recreation, I'm yes. thinking about the fact that that's now has a multitude of activities and you're adding more to it as as we go that um, could we that would certainly slow people down um, you know if if you have people trying to cross but then I looked at it and I thought why would they be crossing from that point I wasn't quite sure so that those were just my thoughts that it's kind of a blind curve as you come around there you can't really see what, who's coming in or out of the river pines until you're right on top of it which is a little bit dangerous, I think, if you're going, you know, 35, 40 miles an hour. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe could uh, the, the police chief could work with the highway uh, superintendent, maybe the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, and get a uh, uh, get a speed count and a volume count somewhere around um, Manor Drive. I, I, uh, obviously, it's a uh, you know, I, I don't think you need a class count, but a, a speed and volume would be uh, uh, see what the average speed is out there, uh, and then uh, I, I don't think until we do a, a, a traffic count, uh, we can really uh, see uh, if we need additional signage. Maybe there, maybe the uh, the speed is uh, close to the uh, speed limit. Obviously, you're going to get some bonehead at some point that's going to go uh, flying down the road on, on, on any street. But, uh, you know, let, let, let's get a traffic count, a volume count, and just see what 
Uh, I feel the volume is going to be sky high, but see, see what the speed speed is. Can I ask you a question about that? Because I, I was reading the, the letters and trying to just understand it so that they seem to say that if they do the count and then everybody's driving around 35, that's why they leave it at 35? Is that, am I understanding that correctly? No, speed limit. Did I misunderstand the way the study that they've already done? You know, speed limits are generally set at the 85th percentile, right. and it's not 85 percent of the cars. It's it's, it's a uh, it's, it's a different figure, uh, but uh, when when you do a traffic count, you know they put the tubes across the road, and they'll uh, they can get a speed and a volume, and uh, in both directions, uh, and that's a pretty straightaway right there just before the curb at Manor Drive. Um, maybe some time, some place between King Street and there would be a, uh, just just an idea of what the uh, what the volume is, what the count is, and um, I, I don't think until you have something like that you can really talk about it. are they are they really going fast? Let's 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 see if we can get a count. Ed, can I ask you a follow-up question on that? Um, and maybe you no, know, I don't know if you know or don't. <laughs> I know. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Well, can can we do that on a state road? Or do we need the state to do that? Can um, we put our own speed count or volume count? Merrimack Valley Planning Commission generally can but do even that. If it's I mean, a state they've road, done. Would... In fact, they probably have have a uh, okay. a running total. But they, I know they do. They do School Street, uh, uh, 97. So I don't know why they can't do. Okay. Uh, I just don't know if we can legally. Well, well they would not. What I was going to say is the police chief is the police chief, and I think that we should give him the go ahead to do what he wants, to, what he sees fit. I mean to. If he thinks that's what, like Ed suggested, or whatever, I think we should let him. If he thinks the speed limit needs to be changed, I, I'm not a police chief and I'm not a road guy. Let him. Right. Well, I think his issue is he's getting complaints, obviously, from people that live I here, agree. and um, so his concern was more to make sure the board was still on board with looking into that, I am. and that I, that was a priority for the town to really look sure. at the safety on this stretch right I here. I mean, if we can find, maybe speak to him about if he can do what Ed said and get yeah. a road count. Or, or, you know, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. But maybe if he can, he said in his letter, can we petition the state or whatever, I guess give him the green light to do whatever he needs to. Like you said, yeah. there's people coming out of the pines. There's not a lot, but there are people come walk out of there, the ball field. And right. Why don't we just let him do his thing and tell him, I say me, I give him the go-ahead to do whatever he thinks is right to do. Yeah, no, I'll let him know that the board still supports looking into it. I know he wanted to get a meeting together with the highway superintendent and sure. um, just to kind of talk about some things. So as yeah. long as you guys are still on board with looking on into board. that stretch, then I'll let him know to well, see yeah, what he can don't do. You, the, don't you feel that probably the the um, amount of use of the recreation area is increasing? I do, which is why we started right. the letter initially in 2014 that we thought it was um, okay. necessary to change that you know there are kids out there crossing the street and, and even on the sidewalks and cars right. do just they do I know fly I'm, around I know way. Mike Mike Suckman Wood was trying to get the road painting done the lines maybe oh. they could do like a big like slow or I don't know I, I maybe you know more about this than I do but right. is it something they could put pavement painting in the road like I don't like, know. Yeah, I mean, some places have like a slowdown as you approach. Yeah, I, whatever. I don't uh, know. Yeah, but, we I can. Mean, I can have him explore it more and let him know that um, you would be interested in a speed count and volume count and see where it takes us. There is the. Um, did you see on the news the three D crosswalk? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'd like one of those. I know. That was <laughs> I just caught this is something else. Okay. okay. So moving on, we're going to talk about the Pines bathrooms locking and unlocking cleaning. So are they open? Is that why we're talking? They're not, but we're just waiting on those partitions, and oh, then they okay. will be open. So have they? Has anyone followed up to see when they're going to come in? Yeah, I talked to Mark last week, um, and he thought they were going to be on any day. So um, I think they're all just waiting for the call. I think they keep saying any day now they'll be ready. Are they making them type thing? Uh, they aren't. The highway is not the company. No, they the were, company. Yeah, I don't know if it was, but it was some custom order that they had to. So they had were to just back. Yeah, yeah, they were back ordered. Okay. Um, and they will be exterior partitions, so right. they'll be right. outside the door so that the right. bathroom doors can stay open and let yeah. air flow. Oh, okay. right. um, but then you have the partitions to block people okay. from seeing what's taking place inside. Okay, does um, someone want to start with this subject, the unlock well, and unlock? Well, I guess my concern would be um, if we leave the bathrooms unlocked all day long, you would need to have someone checking on them periodically all day long. You can't just leave them like that and assume everything's great in the bathroom. Um, so I guess I was 
thinking that you might want to, um, when the park is being used for games, have the bathrooms, perhaps the teams use have a key and, and open the bathrooms up and then lock them up. I don't know. So if I may, my only concern with that is we use taxpayer money to build those bathrooms. They should be accessible to everybody utilizing that area and not just the youth sports groups. We have boaters down there that are the only ones that pay to use that facility. We have kids at the playground. I just feel that we, we're building bathrooms. They should be able to be used by everyone that's using that facility. I mean, that's my personal opinion. Right. I just think with the money and the time that we've spent, I don't think they should only be for youth sports right. So is my feeling. Well, it's not, I'm, let me qualify. I'm not trying to limit their use. I'm just concerned with who is going to be responsible for these bathrooms all day long. Right. You know, that, that's my concern is who is going to be the one that gets called when there's a problem there or a complaint about the bathroom during the day. And, and I don't think we have that worked out yet. And until such point that we do, um, how can we just open them up like that? That, that's my concern. I mean, maybe, maybe it's something that we have to work more towards, um, I don't know whether it would fall under a recreation department or a DPW department, but we don't have a maintenance department that will maintain those bathrooms during the day. Am I, am I wrong about this? Or, I wasn't on the board when this all got proposed, so I don't know. It got proposed, it didn't really get proposed, and it was never talked about until oh. recently now they're getting open so we never really it oh. never came before this board to talk about they were handled by somebody else that put the bathrooms there so okay. now but um okay so what i did is i had called the police chief and had a conversation with them and it was actually his suggestion in our conversation was that and let me back up a step i said to him the reason it bothers me to have people um, close those, like have a person or a janitor or someone close them. God forbid someone's in there that's on drugs or drinking, kids yeah. or whatever, and a team, a coach went in there and tried to lock them and beat the guy up. I mean, I'm, I'm taking it to the extreme, but whatever. You know what I'm trying to say? So he said to me, I do not have a problem if you guys set a time, say it's 9 o'clock or whatever, 8 o'clock, whatever. We go down, we send a, the cruiser down there, they go in there. Um, I think he said three times in the night to turn around. They do a, a check of the area. He said, I don't have a problem locking the bathrooms. I'll have my officer go in the flashlight or whatever, look it over, make sure they're cleaned out, and, and, and they'll lock them. That's fine. So he didn't have a problem with that. The problem is, from talking to this board before, is who was going to unlock them and who's going to clean them. So, again, when I was talking to the chief, he's like, well, why can't the janitor on his way in from work unlock them and then um, he can check them for cleanliness but again now we run into the problem does the janitor have time to go down there and clean them well before that let's find out what time he starts I, don't, I know it's different every day isn't it? no he works nine to five nine, nine to five but so, Monday through Friday so can I ask you a question and I wish he, Lenny didn't Renny I call him Lenny Renny didn't get away from us because I had a conversation with him early today I saw him out in town and he had said to me that does that janitor fall under his budget? No. 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 Okay. Facilities falls under me. So, oh, is there money to increase his hours? And I know we're going to have a problem coming into the weekends, because we, he doesn't work weekends, to give him a half an hour a day, whatever it takes to go in there and unlock them? Uh, well, I don't think you need to add, change his hours to unlock bathrooms. So it's you the know. weekends? Well, again, I mean, nine to five, he could stop on the way in, unlock the bathrooms, and come. I mean, you're yeah. talking five minutes to unlock them. Right. Um, right. Weekends, and I think cleaning is going to be an issue because right, right. I do think it's going to need three times a week, probably right. at least, to be cleaned. Right. Every other day. Uh, I, th I think that uh, it may be a regulation, and it may have to be done every day. It may, it may be. Um, you know, they did. We did try and build them. Like I said, there's no um, paper towels, the hand dryers, so that that's not going to be thrown around. Um, there's cement floors so they can be washed, hosed off. But um, out, I mean, they have public bathroom so they may be need to be cleaned. But we're not going to be using them day. in the winter time. Correct. So we're going to be using them probably you April know, to November. Mid-April to November, right? So I don't know the budget. Do we Well, have so he's 40 hours. 40 hours. So anything you add to him is overtime. So just right there it's overtime. Um, and now, then it's a matter of what you want to do for that. 
So I, I mean, we could get prices on a cleaning company if you want and see if there's how much it would cost to have an outside company come and but do that. But is there any money even to do an outside company? Well, it depends. We've saved money on the maintenance budget because um, Steve is doing a lot of the stuff in-house, so it has freed up. We do have excess money in our supply and maintenance. Um, again, I don't know how much it will cost to have so, somebody maintain those. I don't. A devil, a devil advocate, if we're going to pay an outside company, are we better off paying him overtime? I think that's up to you guys. I, but again, I don't know that he wants to work seven days a week cleaning bathrooms. No, no, I didn't say clean the bathroom seven days. I meant if he could maybe, if one of the days was Saturday morning to clean them, and he unlocked Saturday morning, but then he someone has to unlock them Sunday morning. Right. Is there anyone down there playing Sunday? There's all different people down there on the weekends. So oh, it's open. The park's open Sunday. Well, if, if, so, the, and, and, if the police department's going to lock going to lock them up seven days a week, um, and he's and if he will open them up at nine o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday, maybe the police department will just unlock the doors on Saturday and Sundays at okay. nine o'clock. Okay. I guess my concern would just be to get a little more information on. Um, I mean, you're assuming that if you unlock the bathrooms and let it go, it's going to be fine all day. And I mean, I work in a high school where I know the bathrooms aren't fine all day, every day. Things go wrong in the bathrooms and they have to call the maintenance people. And, and I'm just wondering, but, what is our plan for this event? Right. What is, so let's what just is say our plan? That how if, many people are in a high school and they're using that high school all day long? The pines during the week and not using that heavily, right? There's not that many people going well, in and out of it. As of next week when school's out, they, they'll have day events down there. Right. I, I mean, we're not talking the same volume as a high school, but there's a lot of people down there during the day right. and at night. Um, how, many, so, how many stalls in each bathroom? There's two, um, two in each. Okay, so, um, and we have no experience with this anywhere else in town where we've actually had, these are all we've been using the porta potties on all our right. So Shanahan has fields. them, but they are dedicated Shanahan. They unlock them when they have their soccer games. They're okay. not public like right. the Pines. Right. But and they're open for the soccer games, and they've been running smoothly without too much trouble. As far as I know. And who cleans them? They deal with it completely. Oh. The um. But this is public. GYS That's deals with them completely. GYS over there. So this is more public. This is more people using it. Right. Right. Voters. I mean, I, I'm sure, again, I don't even know, because even if we offered Steve overtime, it's going to be at 5 o'clock. What happens if there is an issue during the day? I, I really don't know. I don't know what. I think we'd be better off trying to get a quote from a company well, and put a sign out that if there's a mess, maybe call a company. I, I don't know. I can see if there's cleaning companies that do this. There's got to be other towns that have public bathrooms without a facilities department. Well, right, I think that'd be the thing to find out. How do, this, so, how do other towns do So it? if what Kathy's saying, and yeah. she'd like to have someone go there every day, so you go to what you just said, and you hire a company, they come down every day and they clean them. And that's it. You pay them. You yeah, I mean, we could do, and then if there is an emergency or something during the day, they he's, could call Steve, and he's here, he's 9 here. to 5, and he could go down. Right. Um, um, that. Yes. We could try something like that. I can get quotes and that's see what it would cost. I can't believe it wouldn't be a lot of money a year, though, would it? I mean, to what, clean? What, yeah, but it costs us to clean town hall. I mean, it's a bigger job, but... Yes, and there was no cleaning products used when we were cleaning town hall. Right. Well, <laughs> they, were, they were not clean buildings, just, what, what if you'll recall. Hypothetically, I thought you did... It would be we were paying 24 thousand. It cost us less to hire Steve, or it no, was to no, call I it at the time. That, yes, saying, it was like $24,000 to clean the buildings. So to get an outside company, I bet would be between 15 and 20. Probably. Okay. I, I know it's only yeah. seasonal, right? but still... Right, because then you're talking, they didn't come seven well, days a week. The I, cleaner that we had right. was like three days a week. But you're not talking about uh, an extended period of time to no, clean it's, those. it's not right. either. You should right. be able to go in and out. You should be able to do those in, in a, the two of them in an hour. Yeah. Uh, Is there? I'll, I'll have some companies come out and look at them and give us. I mean, it's not going to hurt us to get well, quotes. Could I ask the question? I know that the bow ramp people already pay a fee. Do the people using the fields down there pay? Perhaps that's something that should be considered because now that we want to have this facility, it's going to cost a little bit. It wouldn't be... I think asking too much to have some type of a fee since the boaters are already paying a fee. They, you know. and yes, we've had this discussion in the past. This sh I personally feel there should be a permit fee. Yeah. Um, they should be paying for the utilization of the lights. It's right on our permit. We don't get any funds for the usage of the lights. Right. Um, they, a lot of the groups feel they offer in-kind donations. They go down there, they maintain them, they rake the fields, things like that. That's their donation to the Pines. Right, but we're adding a new facility, so it would be nice to have a conversation with them about helping out a little bit, so that the taxpayers know that we're 
we're doing our best to make it. Can I ask you a question? I know not everyone wants to do this probably, but let's just say there was a janitor at one of the schools that wanted to work. Can we, we can't employ someone like that, right? To come in and take care of them. Well, they're almost like, um, we can't, I mean, we can, it's just private. a cost. Yeah, right? it's a private cost. That's all but then, but see, here's the difference with that though, Bill, we do that. We provide all the cleaning products, right. which is fine. Right. Um, you know, it's not unlike when we had, um, right. Kevin McDonald maintaining the buildings when so, we didn't have somebody. Right, he came right. from the school, right. did it for a couple so, months. So oh. what I'm saying to you yeah. is if down the road, if we go the route we're talking about, we go to an outside company, let's just say it's crazy money, we can't mm -hmm. afford it. Then do we advertise it for X amount of, X amount of hours a week, so much, so it's from April to November, so many hours a week, someone, we put the job out and they can come clean. I mean, I don't know if that would work. I'm just yeah, we certainly could. We don't have it, so we could. I mean, in the but fiscal 20 gonna, budget, the money is under maintenance. We would have to move it onto a salary account, but I mean, but that's all something that could be done. time, so they wouldn't be... Yep. Out, right, yeah, you wouldn't need, you know, you could probably do five or ten hours a week. Right, right. You know, as Ed said, maybe an hour a day. You could do a... Because um, I like the... Not to interrupt you, but you know what the, the people that crosswalk people, they right, come out freezing guards, cold yep. morning and evening, yep. but I think they get four hours a day for doing that, two and two, but whatever. I'm sorry, go ahead. You could you could put it out, uh, are you looking to hire somebody to work uh, an hour a day or whatever to uh, clean the bathrooms or, uh, or weekends included? You might have to hire a couple people. Uh, one will take three days, four days, one will take four. Next week, reverse it. Uh, you, you're going to get you, you're going to get somebody, and I'm, I'm looking at um, the, the so-called B team that works down at the uh, at, uh, the recycling center down at. at right, the, right, right. You're going to find people like that right, that, that will want to turn well, that will do that. Have a little extra money. So, I don't know if they want to clean up. Well, no, I'm not not talking those guys. No, but no, I'm no. Talking I know, about I know, that, I know. That there's more than just those two right, people right, that will would do right. something like that. And then they could probably possibly be in charge of unlocking them. Well, well, it seems like we already got that set up ex uh, Monday through Friday. The custodian can do it. The police right. department is going to lock them up. We just need someone to unlock them well, on Saturdays and Sundays. Right. Why couldn't the police handle both the locking and unlocking just so that we know that it's secure and, you know, that they have I don't know. He guns. told me why he didn't. <laughs> so on. they can make sure everything's good. You know what I mean? Like um, it would be consistent. At least we'd get a consistent picture of what the bathrooms look like when you open and close them. When I had a conversation with him, they didn't want to do that? No, he said because my men are not in the business of checking bathrooms for cleanliness and what have you, and they should be unlocked, they should be checked for cleanliness. And he goes, it's kind of degrading. I don't mind locking them, but I don't think the men are going to want to unlock them. Oh. But I would say to that point, they're if they're the ones them. locking them, then nothing should have happened overnight unless someone broke in or there's an issue. But if there was an issue at night, they're going to get locked. And then the morning, the person would clean them. I guess you would say, think. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to him again and follow up and just see if that's, um, you know, if we make sure that it's not, they don't need to do anything other than make sure there's no one in there. Lock and unlock them. They don't have to worry about cleaning them. You know, maybe then it's easier to have them do it both ways. I don't know. Well, they could report any problem to, if it's a daytime, just, is it Steve. Right. So Steve. Steve my, to Steve. I'm so sorry, Steve. But, um, I forgot your name. My point was. Yes. My point was, it, is if we started off, we're going to start off every day of the week cleaning them, right? But I'll my point was, out. if we did it Monday, let's say three days a week, that might be good enough. But right. we, we don't won't know. know. We won't we know, know until we because start. Because they're not open. We don't know how dirty they're going to get. Right. So. I guess a clean bathroom is better than a dirty one. I mean, I would assume that we would need something over the weekend because that's yeah. when they're going to be used the most, is Saturday and Sunday with the games and things. Right. Um, so if we're cleaning them Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from Friday to Monday, I think they're going to be in pretty poor condition. But, and, and again, I is, don't know. Right now they use the outhouses. People use the outhouses. How often do they get dumped and cleaned? Probably I don't know how often they come. They Not, don't come every day. They don't come every day. No. Nope. You're right. They don't. They, they don't. come probably every seven to 12. Right, but my concern still goes back to this flushing toilets, there's running water. No, I know, I, you know, I know. They don't have that in the porta potty so right. I do right. think we will have issues. We tried to mitigate it as much as we could with dryers and try to remove things that cannot right. cause damage. You're not gonna uh, know how it goes until they open them up and see right. what happens. So. Yeah. All right, so I'll find some cleaning companies, um, get some prices, and then depending on that, I can put something out. Um, seeing if there's someone interested in being a contractor, 
you know, five to ten hours a week or mm -hmm. a couple hours a week and share it with somebody to clean. Um, like I said, then we buy all the products, but that's fine too. And then get a price. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll yeah. I'll get those. Um, I'll follow up with the chief just about unlocking, but I think otherwise we have a plan as long as they wouldn't mind doing it on Saturday and Sunday, um, the police. And then Steve could do it Monday through Friday. You mean unlocking? Unlocking. Right. Right. I, I would like to please check in on it initially, especially just so that we have some feedback. Um, I will tell you, um, we did, uh, the chief and I met with Wayne Alarm two weeks ago. Uh, we're actually going to expand the cameras that are down at the Pines. Okay. Um, we currently have a camera with an aerial view, which is great. Um, it actually helps them a lot, but you can't zoom in, and there's an awful lot of trees now that are in bloom, so it blocks some view. Um, we are going to put a camera right on the corner of the bathrooms. Um, so if there is an issue or if there is a mess in there, um, damage, will help the police identify who's been in there. Um, and we're also going to put um, a camera down on the telephone pole overlooking the boat ramp um, because as you may be aware, someone cut our lock and we had to buy a new lock and um, it's happened a few times now that people are cutting the lock to get into the boat ramp and um, so this oh, will allow us okay. to have that a little more patrolled as well. Um, Is there like an so. emergency? button or anything down like if somebody had an emergency I know most people have cell phones but is there's there's nothing like a um, like a call box like an old call box well yeah I don't know if they even do that anymore but is should there be something down there so that if there's a, like a real you know you need the police there now I suppose everyone has a cell phone nowadays I don't you know, I don't think anybody needs that there's not That'll, too many people that don't have a phone that's so. true that's true even the, even the even the kids that shouldn't have one. The right. Yeah, they do. I suppose. Okay, are we all set on that subject? Yeah. Okay, so moving on, we're going to talk about the goals of the board for fiscal 2020. So, if you don't. Well, I asked to do this and, and not to make us take on more work than, than I feel like you. It's obvious you, you have a full boatload of work as it is, um, and I'm just getting caught up to speed. But um, we sort of did this a little bit on the finance board. and. And some of our, bud our goals were the things like every year, you know, try and recommend a balanced budget. So for the Board of Selectmen, staying within the voted budget would be the, the offset to the recommended. We, we're here to make sure that these departments now stay within the voted budget and keep reminding them that they need to stay within that budget as best as possible. Um, and in addition to that, you, you've already, you're in progress already to hire the new fire chief. That could certainly be a goal you know, for the year because um, you're already in process and, and it's going to happen. And um, I realize that the cable contract is up for renewal. Um, I was, on, I don't know if you know this, but I was on the board way, way back when. I don't want to say how long ago. Um, but um, it was up for renewal that year and the Board of Selectmen worked on that contract as well. And that was a, a good goal to renew that. That's a 10-year contract. I didn't know if there were any other contracts due for renewal this year for, that we'd have to work on? Not for, well, yes and no. So okay. at the end of fiscal 20, um, all of the union contracts are up, all of the contractual employees contracts are up, um, and we have the lease on, I think, Washington Hall is up at December of 2021. Uh, that might be 2021, um, but the Little Red Schoolhouse, I believe, is 2020. Okay, so... So the Little Red Schoolhouse, and so for next town meeting, we have to have all these contracts. Am I un understanding this right? The funding. Town meeting doesn't vote the contract. You do, but the but funding is. Yes, okay, yep. so we, we have all, all contracts for this Correct. year. That's a lot. Correct. And the Little Red Schoolhouse, how long a contract is that? Uh, I think it was five years that we did um, to see, because it's leased to the Garden Club. Uh, I believe it was just a five-year lease. Okay. And the... Uh, Washington Hall, I believe, was a five-year lease as well. They wanted it longer, but the board wanted to do just five years to see how it um, went initially. Okay. And, um, you know, my interest in the, the capital plan to c try and I've been going through the town reports to pull out what we've already purchased, kind of try and put that in perspective, um, things we've already voted to do get those on the plan and then start to move forward with what else we might need. Try, and I'll definitely need Denise's help a lot to um, 
some things we funded cash out and other things we're borrowing, so we need to start balancing our our cash out and our payments so that we don't chew up too much of the uh, operating budget. And I guess the only other thing that I had um, thought about, and I, I spoke with you, the board, about this, about the storage of the town records, and I've, I've taken a little time and I've looked into um, online, they have the records on records retention, the rules, the laws, and then I went ahead and called um, the Secretary of State office, and there's a, a guy there, John Warner, from the Records Management Unit, who said he'd be willing to come down here and do like a PowerPoint and present to departments because he's, he says there's a lot of things you don't have to keep permanently. Right, and, and we they don't. may not knew that they may not know that if they're piling it up. And we, the, you were saying, and I looked at the boxes in um, that other room, and um, I know some of them aren't that labeled as to what's actually in there, and I'm wondering. Well, if we're keeping, late. well, we should have a master list of what we're keeping and for how long and why. And and I don't want to put that on you. I think each department can kind of start that up from within themselves. But if if need be, this this gentleman said he'd be glad to come down here and um, assist in any manner as far as telling us if there's things we can get rid of, if there's things we need to keep saving, um, anything like that. Right, I mean, that's fine, but the state puts out record retention schedules that all departments have that tell us what to destroy, and you still need permission from the state. Um, but this board has made decisions in the past, um, like the accounts payable. We're not required to keep them as long as we have, but the Board of Selectmen wanted to because there was an issue with the Haverhill landfill, and if it weren't for old uh, payables, the town would have been on the hook for a lot more money. So they started a process that things that we could destroy, they did not want the town to destroy. Um, and that's why some of these things have gone, um, I mean, the payables, there, there's years and years and years and years of them so for that reason. So maybe we should rethink some of that. I yeah, mean, it's, it's possible. We don't have something like the landfill hanging over us anymore. That was a mess. Right, but I don't know that, the, and I don't know because I wasn't here, so I don't know if the town knew that that was an issue going on. Oh, yes, Or if did. until it came to fruition. No, we knew. Okay. <laughs> Could but that's why I like, that, that's yes. why with the payables, they're yeah. still there, even though a lot of those can be destroyed. Because right. we were told we cannot destroy them in case something came up and we needed mm -hmm. to access old records. Okay, and we do but. have two scanners now in the uh, clerk's office, and um, the copy machines typically can scan as well, right? Yep. So we can start having departments scan things that we need to keep too. We don't have to keep the paper. No, and we are starting to do that, but again, that's very time consuming. Not everything's the same size. Trying to scan accounts payable when right. some of them are just a little teeny, you know, three by five piece of paper. Um, and it's, it's time consuming to scan. I mean, we've had the scanning system in the town clerk's office now for three years, and only a fraction of those records have been scanned. It's just time consuming to sit there and right. scan. So yeah. it's all doable. It's right, just but that was being paid for with a grant, right? The scanning that would Community be Preservation bought the equipment okay. to, to store the historical documents. Okay, and so now it's up to us to find the personnel power. Correct, so Mike and I were expanding the scanning to certain departments so okay. that, um, you know, I'll have a scanner so personnel records can be scanned, but even still, those are permanent records. Permanent. They're permanent forever. Right, okay. <laughs> so, but um, once we scan them, we can destroy the paper. I don't know. That's what, that's what this gentleman okay. seemed to suggest, that we don't have to keep the paper. Once we scan them and we have, we have the secure server now, right? We have everything backed up. Yes, but we pay for data storage. So if we're going to increase our volume of data storage, then we have to increase our, what we're paying every month okay. for data storage. But that's a necessary yep. thing. I mean, at least then we have a better way to access this as opposed to, um, I don't even know what's in the safe. Oh, correct. Right. Going forward, easier okay. access is definitely a priority for us. So yep. that seems like we shouldn't need another building if we just start to get this a little more under control. I just don't think it's that doable to get this under control right away. I think we're going to be dealing with this for years, trying to get it under control and trying to scan. Even if we scan stuff going forward, it's still all the old records that we have to deal with. Right, the, the backlog. But I mean, Correct. going forward, if each department takes the records that they need to maintain and they scan them during the next couple of months before they close out the fiscal year, that's something they can certainly get done. I don't think so. I don't think it's something that can get done. We have one person offices. People are going to be standing at a scanner scanning. We have, you know, 2,500 page commitment books for the taxes. I'm going to stand there and, I mean, there's just certain things that, I don't know. I, I just think it's a huge job to have someone manning a scanner to scan everything that we have. 
I'm talking about scanning going forward. Right. I mean, so, I'm just talking about scanning going right. forward. I mean, look at the warrants. I mean, even yes. to just scan every piece of invoice, that's not five minutes. But if we start doing it as we go, so when they create the paper, scan it. Right. I mean, the, just to start that progress toward that would be a big deal. So when, you, when we create it, scan it in and put it in so that we don't have to keep the paper if we don't want to. Right. It's not that easy, Kathy. Trying to scan the paper, again, trying to scan the accounts payable with, but you know, you 500 invoices that are different shape and size. She's going to have to do the warrants and stand at a scanner and scan all of those and code them. Well, what I'm, what I'm wondering is when we get the invoices, can they come electronically or can people scan in the invoices and send them to us? I mean, do we have to? And then how are you going to approve them? Technically, you're the approving authority. Right. They're here on the table for you to look at. Right. But as long as we have them electronically scanned and saved, we don't have to save that pile of paper. That's my point. No, and I understand that. Okay. But I think you're, I think, I don't think you understand the time it actually takes to scan documents. And we have one person offices and I'm going to now pay my town accountant what we pay her to stand at a scanner and just scan documents when she should be doing accounting. Or we have the town clerk that's now going to take time away from her work to sit there at the scanner. I, I think it's a, it's a huge undertaking to scan the documents. And we don't have administrative staff around the building that can just do that for us. But going forward, going forward, that's okay, if maybe, <laughs> whatever. But the storage that we have in town hall already needs to go somewhere or whatever. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm fearful that if we were to open up a historic building, which is what that building is on, on Washington Street, as a storage facility, is just going to get stuffed full of paper and forgotten about, and nothing will be done about moving us forward. And if you take the time to go walk around that building, um, like I did, um, I was stunned at, at what was left outside. There is a water and sewer pickup truck literally rusting into the ground. There are full right. pickup trucks. I know. And I've there are multiple lawnmowers pushed into the. It's, right. it's a dump. And so, it's an embarrassment, and I so, will not move anything more into there if I can avoid it. Right. So going forward, what you just had said, it's a dump, and it needs to be cleaned up. As I had stated, I was trying to get the water department to put on the agenda to go ahead. They have stuff they have to get out of there. That truck is theirs. It's not, the, it's not our responsibility. They have to clean that property that. up when they finally vacate it. So the, they, am I correct? They, Got to get it all cleaned up. You're correct. Out. And it's on, they had it on their agenda. They didn't have a quorum last week, so it's, right. their meeting so is now next Monday. Until they can Monday. get on the agenda, until they can talk about how they're going to clean it, how they're going to finish. The old um, superintendent left town. He was in the process but, of cleaning it and moving it to his new facility. But that needs to be cleaned up. Just, That's not our responsibility. But, well, to clean just it. Look, I think you had said that, they, that they're going to uh, take the responsibility. They're, they're going to get it cleaned up. So they're they're that, that should it. be... Uh, that should be a day. Well, 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 let me ask you this. How come that equipment wasn't turned in when new equipment was purchased? I mean, that's the water department. I know, but the response creating more boxes and things and dumping things. Well, let's I mean, just we talk just about the responsibility of the, the first thing you said is the responsibility of the truck. That's an enterprise fund, and they right. don't answer to us. But our, so our response to filling our town hall full of boxes of paper is to go find another building to go dump it in. I just don't think I that's a good idea. I'm sorry. I just... I okay. feel like that particular property in a neighborhood used to be used to be a park, a swimming place. It used to all, and it's an eyesore. And I feel like our priority should be to make sure that that gets restored. That's my and, and I'm working on that. Right, but I, have you looked around outside? Have you walked out back? I, I there, know all about the, it. I know all okay, about. Okay, what are those fenced-in areas out back? With that's those? where they used to store equipment and what have you, and they they were storing equipment in there and what have you, and that now needs to be cleaned out. And I'm it was talking. A, years ago, it was a highway. There was the highway gro the Groven Highway Department was there. I know when years Tom ago. Fairbanks was on. But yeah, years ago. If you go back, there's first a fence scenario that says high voltage. I don't even know if that's effective. But beyond that is another small fence scenario, oh, completely overgrown, so you don't almost see it. And there's some box in there, and I don't even know what's in there. What is that? Um, what, what, is, what is in this? I feel like we need to take responsibility because we own this. I know they need to clean it. I'm not saying we have to go in there. I'm not saying for us to go there and start picking up the trash there. But we need to set a timeline on this because it's gone on for too long. And 
until I can, in, until this board can get here back when they're going to get on the agenda, when they're going to give us a timeline, when they're going to clean it out. Um, we can't really do nothing because it's their truck, it's their hydrants, it's their equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Until that's cleaned out, the outside and the inside needs to be cleaned. They need to vacate it. And then um, we can move forward with it. But until then, we, I don't believe we can because it's, and we've been trying. I mean, this was going on when Tom, before Tom left the, as a superintendent. And that we started it back then to get them to clean it. They're supposed to be bringing everything down to the new, the new building down on School Street. Well, I mean, as part of our capital plan, I think anything that we purchase now that it's replacing anything, we need to make sure that whatever's being replaced is turned in and cleaned up. I mean, this is just unacceptable to have this much equipment out back of there. There's a sit-on lawnmower. Does that fall on our capital plan? It the, should be. Not the water department. Nope. Well, they still put in for capital needs, and we can just hold it up until they tell us what they're doing with the existing truck or mower or whatever. It just, we can't have this going on in town property. Okay. Well, um, do you have anything else? Are you all done with your goals, Kathy? For the year? Well, they weren't just my goals. I was hoping the board would want to do some of this stuff, but, well, um, you know. Well, suggestions. <laughs> Suggest your goals. Heartfelt wants. <laughs> I can read. Mike had sent me an email. Sure. Um, What's Mike say? I don't know how serious he is on these, <laughs> but I will read them. Please um, do. I, now, don't take offense, Mike. <laughs> Uh, his first goal is to lessen the CPA tax to 1% uh, and stop spending money on projects that don't return better to the town. Uh, he'd like to lessen the tax burden on the people. <laughs> um, when did you send this, Mike? No, Mike no, Wood sent Mike it. Oh, Mike Wood. Oh, this oh. Is no. From, from I was telling Mike Dempsey oh, not to oh, take offense. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh I, I, I thought it was you. No, Coming my apologies. Um, yes. The second issue is the speeding issues. Um, he'd like to have the police expand their watch with cameras and robo tickets. I don't know what robo tickets are. Isn't that the, um, on the, the stop red light? light cameras? Yeah. But that's right. not for speeding. That would be for running red lights. I'm not sure. And his third one was dog park issues and loose dog complaints. We should be increasing the fine for people that abuse the pines in the dog park down there. Those were his three goals that he had emailed me. Okay. Hey, do you have three goals or any kind of goals? Do you um, yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, hold on, I gotta see what I'm doing. Uh, I, I still uh, want to uh, have, have the selectmen look at <coughs> at all town buildings, see what they need for repairs, and to uh, just to expand upon what what Kathy had said. Maybe at the same time, look at the outside of of these buildings and see if there's uh, any issues outside, like the trash that needs to be uh, taken care of. Uh, she mentioned the fire chief. Uh, we need uh, uh, storage of documents. She mentioned that. Um, uh, fiscal restraint and, and keeping taxes low. Um, whatever we can do with that. Uh, I know taxes are going to go up quite a bit with the, uh, with the new school. Uh, so we're going to have, we don't want some of these seniors to be moving out of town uh, because their taxes are taxing them out of Groveland. Uh, we, we'd like, I'd like to work with the water department, uh, some type of a water filtration plan. I know that we've had people in complaining about, uh, th about the rusty water. Uh, and when that was first brought up, uh, a lot of us on the board didn't realize that the town didn't filter their water. Uh, uh, also, uh, I, I still feel very strongly that uh, that the council and aging, the seniors, they don't belong in this room. Uh, we need to find a place for them, uh, whether it's uh, uh, a building, a, a room. Uh, we need to get them out of here. And I know that it was turned down at, uh, at, with the vote. Uh, but we, we need to look at a secondary place for them. Uh, so, so some of these aren't just for fiscal year 2020. These are these go uh, these go out longer than that, Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, we also one thing that we need to look for a secondary source of cable TV. Uh, right now, we don't have any competition. Comcast. Uh, Kind of uh, tells us what they what they uh, 
what they're going to do for us, we don't have any competition, and I firmly believe that with competition, it's going to lower the costs. Uh, cable TV and, and Internet service uh, can be done at, I, I believe it can be done at a lower cost. Uh, we're at the mercy of Comcast right now, so we need to work on that. That might take an effort of the cable TV advisory board and, and something else. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, as I've been reading, some of these uh, municipalities that have their own uh, electric company run an internet service through their electric company. We need to uh, we, we need to see what it would cost to, to wire up the uh, wire up the town for uh, for broadband service uh, fiber off the cable. That's what we don't have. Um, I, I don't know what that that would cost. Uh, some of the municipalities have done that, and they're actu actually able to uh, they're, they're able to provide faster internet access. And as was brought up at our last uh, cable TV advisory board meeting uh, and explained by one of our experts on the board that they can offer a faster Internet service because there's less people. So they, somehow they can power it up and it can, it can be faster. We need to look at that. Uh, right now, that's all I can see that I got here, Bill. That's a good okay. load. <laughs> there, yeah, it is. It, it is. Expensive, some of it, too. Yep. So um, my goals were to, <coughs> first goal was to get the board to at least take and pick three things possibly as a board to work on, to concentrate. I think one of the major goals is the fire chief issue. We need to get a fire chief. Um, I think that we need to um, obviously get the people's taxes down. That's a, that's a big thing. Um, I don't know. I think we do a good job at keeping budgets under control. I think we do, we do a great job at... Um, working with basically nothing in the town, so we can't control if the people vote for school. We can't control that. I mean, the taxes are good. I mean, I don't know why we, I, I mean, I know a lot of things we can't control, but. Um, Can I just quickly sure. comment on that? Um, so if you look back, our tax rate has not increased um, since I've been here. Um, our taxes have actually gone down year after year. It's the assessments that have gone up. So we have done a tremendous job not increasing taxes. Um, we are not, we have not used all of our excess capacity. We are not at our levy limit. Um, so taxes are not increasing, but the assessments are. That will continue to happen as the house values rise. Uh, we can do nothing about that, unfortunately. Um, but we want our house values to be higher. You know, we want to. Um, it's your biggest investment. Yeah, we want a promising community yeah. that people want to invest in and, and come here and buy houses. So um, just on that, you know, we've done what we can. Um, we've, we've increased our senior work off program and the abatements that seniors and the exemptions that they're entitled to. So that offers some assistance to people that can't afford them. Um, but just on the taxes, the tax rate has decreased year after year. It will not with the high school going on, um, but the tax rate has gone but down. We also took out the restrictions for the seniors so that if um, it's not as income restricted, if no one else is applying and you would like to help the town out, um, you can do it, right? It used to be. There's still an income restriction. We took out the years. You had to live in town for 10 years, I believe, okay. in order to participate if, in the program. If no one volunteered, that we that the income wasn't going to be an issue. If you still wanted, are you sure? Yeah, I don't believe it. I don't we'll that, that in the town meeting. We'll check that. <laughs> uh, but so we so just we are uh, we have been very conscious of the tax um, the taxes in town, and we have done a good job as a community of not increasing them. Right. My water rates have gone up more than my taxes. <laughs> but um, the other thing, Bill, too, is to keep the taxes low is the capital plan, managing our capital purchases so that we don't have to do overrides and so that, um, you know, we can and pay off the, 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 la the ladder we, truck that's the override, get that paid off, bring down the taxes. Right, know. but the other thing, too, is that people voted the ladder truck. It wasn't this board that voted it. I mean, well, because right. we had no choice. Right. Right, we, now we're going to get to a place where we're going to have choices because if we can get ahead of the capital plan so that it's not an emergency to buy something, we have time to figure out a way to do it, you know, so that we don't raise the taxes. Right, but, but public debt you can't just pay off. I know. Um, so they're non-callable bonds most of the time. You know. And the biggest expense is the center street land. It's not the fire truck. The center street, and we can, we're so. bound and we're, we're tied into that? Yes. Okay. Okay, I guess that's, I'm good. Um, so going on, we have the votes of the board. And there are none because we moved the minutes, so okay. there are no other votes. We have selectman time and reports. 
Does anyone want to start with you, Ed? Uh, I don't have anything. Okay, Kathy? No, I already told you about the records and um, looking into that and anything else I've worked on. So. Okay, old or unfinished business. Oh, did you have anything? Um, no. Old or unfinished business? Kathy? Um, no. Okay. Ed? Uh, just one. Um, I know the last couple meetings we, uh, we had complaints about uh, uh, unleashed dogs running through the pines, and I know the police department was going to look into it. Um, maybe for the next meeting we can get a, uh, a list of uh, how many violations have issued, uh, how many verbal warnings uh, that they've issued. I think that this, this board had said that uh, enough with the verbal warnings, uh, issue the fines. Uh, let's get a, a handle on how many that they've, uh, how many people that they've grabbed. Um, I can tell you it was actually kind of funny when I was down there with the chief and Wayne Alarm. Um, a woman pulled in right in front of us, got out, got out with her dogs, and her dogs went running. Um, the chief called the station, had an officer come down, and um, had a conversation with the woman, and she said she's lived in town, never knew she couldn't have her dog running around the parks. And the officer was great. Uh, it was um, Detective Riley, Sergeant Riley, and she said to her, um, you know, you're parked directly in front of the sign that says no dogs allowed. And she made the woman read the sign, and she did issue her a citation, and she said, I never had no idea. Um, so they are down there, and they're trying to educate, but they are issuing tickets. Right, um, so I'll get a list. Are you good? Uh, that's, that's it. Bill. All right, Kathy, you said you're good? Um, so our next agenda, is that what we're doing at this point on the agenda or not? No, that would have been selectman's time. I know. This, this, I'm, I apologize. This kind of confuses me, the process. Okay. So... Um, I'd like to have um, our capital plan, I'll bring in what I have on the next agenda so we can start looking at it. Yep, and I had sent out a request, um, I think it's the 14th, which I think is this Friday, um, that I asked departments to provide their list of capital. Um, so I should have a compiled list okay. in the next meeting. And um, the other item that I, that I would like to um, have the board at least discuss is um, the issue of having the financial director working in an office that I think is, is um, what's, a, what's a nice word for it? I'm trying to think of a word you can say on camera. Um, not finding it yet, but uh, it's so hot and noisy with that server thing in there that nobody should be in that office. That office should be a storage facility. No one should be working in that office. I'm not sure who's idea it was to ever put a, a financial director in that office with the server, but um, I think we should correct that, and I'd like that on the next agenda. It, it's disgusting in there. It's, it's boiling hot, and, um, and I don't know what the air quality would be like working with that in, in a room. I wouldn't feel good working alongside that all day. What was the other thing you had said? The capital, capital plan? Improvements. Yeah, capital improvement plan. Yep. So I'll have like the history part done for the last 10 years. I've been taking the pictures and I'll get it together. At least have something for us to start looking at. Okay. I, are you all set? Is that so? You went back to Selectman time? Okay. Yeah, I did. So I'll now, do it right next time. Where were we? Oh, Maybe. <laughs> we were, old business. Are you, were you done with old business? Yes. All right. I, Old business for you, Kathy? I don't, I, don't know. I don't have old business. I don't quite know what that's supposed to be. So old business stuff that we talked about that you want to re-talk about more? Oh, that's what I put on the next agenda. So <laughs> okay. I'm good with that. just putting it right. forward. So under, idea. for me, under old business, um, the sign sales are going good down the pines. The sign company has about six signs right now that they're doing. We'll get a proof. I'll get the proof over to Denise. She'll get the people, the six signs, to turn around and um, get them okayed, and then they'll go into print or makeup or whatever. So that's going well, and I'm going to say you roughly a number dollar-wise we have. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe 3000 Yeah, it's a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. We sold have some six people signs do. already? Yep. That's yeah, we great. Sold yeah. And we had some do like the full five years. Right. A couple just did one year, but we had some I, five I years. I thought it was like on the $3,000 Yeah, it's probably range. a couple thousand. So that money helps with the maintenance. That goes there. into the Pines revolving account, yes. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Good. Under old business, um, 
I spoke to Denise earlier. We're waiting until July for the, the pines down there for the field and what have you. There's a bid coming in this Friday for the um, well. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll press on with that. Um, the boating club and all that, we're waiting for another meeting on that. Mm -hmm. Yep, I talked to Karen over at MVPC on Friday at the Merrimack River meeting. Um, she wasn't really sure what the next step was. I had told her that I believe the town of Groveland's position is. Um, you know, we got the okay from town council that a true boat shed, um, as long as we stick within the parameters, would be covered by CPA, um, that I think we would support putting something forward to CPA, but I think Haverhill needs to step up and, and start contributing. Uh, I feel that in all of our conversations and our meetings, they keep saying that Haverhill will pay for the engineering and the design work, but they've done nothing to come, make that come to fruition. So uh -huh. I think that really is the next step. If Haverhill really wants a combined boating program, then they should... Um, commit to funding the design and engineering work so that we then have something to put forward to CPA. Uh, so Karen did agree. She said um, she thinks maybe it would be best to have a meeting with myself uh, and Allison, who is the chief of staff to the mayor, uh, and have a candid conversation before we get to a full meeting, and then see if Haverhill really is willing to contribute financially, and then if that's the case, have a meeting to start talking about how to make this work. Um, so that's sort of where we stand. Okay. And then... Um, the fire chief, we had a discussion in our last meeting on the fire chief. We're going to get together some, like a little committee, whatever, not committee, but people. Yep. Um, so right now we're scheduled to meet next Thursday, the 20th. Um, not everyone can make it. So um, I will tell you, I have not included the building inspector at this time because I know there was some concern about having more Groveland people than fire people. Um, so I've not included him because as of right now, only... Two of the chiefs can definitely make it on the 20th, a third one, depending on how his recovery is going. So, I, get, I was, I think, the sticking point, but I'm actually, I'm understanding a little more now why the building inspector is important to the process. <laughs> I'm learning as I go. So if you wanted him to sit in, I now understand better. So I withdraw any. <laughs> no, and I may, I when, just, when we get know. to interviewing, I think that's fine. I think screening the resumes is more fire chief. Okay. Um, specialty anyway, so I think they would probably mo be more instrumental in the first part. Okay. And then when it comes to actually interviewing, I would like to have them involved. Um, so that's right now scheduled for the 20th. Great. Um, and I think that's it for now for me. So moving on, is there any other items responsible or reasonably anticipated at this time of posting? No. Ed? No. Okay. No. And then we go to finance director's time. Uh, so just a couple quick things. Um, included in your correspondence was the packet I received at Friday's Merrimack River Committee. Um, it's actually called the Merrimack River District Commission. It was our kickoff meeting. Uh, there was probably 100 people there. I was not expecting it to be so large, but it was all of the area communities, uh, all of the state legislature, legislators, um, representatives from the EPA, uh, citizens groups, and members from the three biggest combined sewer um, overflow systems, which was um, Greater Lawrence, Lowell, and Haverhill. Uh, so it was pretty much just bringing everyone up to speed on where things stand and what really causes the river pollution um, for people that weren't aware or are not aware um, back when the sewer plants were built, oh, sorry, water treatment, wastewater treatment plants were built. The way the combined sewer overflow is, there's a pipe that comes from the sewer system, a pipe that comes from the treatment, and then they combine at some point. So if the rainwater and increases, they combine and spill into the drainage system into the river. Um, there was a lot of pressure on the EPA um, that they need to be the ones to um, fix this or to put pressure on the communities to fix this, that it really needs to be a federal issue because more than 50% of the pollution in the Merrimack River comes from Manchester, New Hampshire alone. Uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, and then Nashua, New Hampshire is the next largest pollutant of the river. Um, so obviously that's well before it even gets to Lowell. Um, uh, Newburyport is, has been the driving factor here. As you can imagine, she's the last stop on the river, so all the pollution just keeps floating down that way. Um, in the packet, there's a number of bills that are being filed by different legislators on the river and how to clean it up and how to deal with the discharge. 
So right now this is informational. There will be another meeting, they believe, in September to really start talking about, you know, what these bills, if any of them have gone through, where it stands, and what we need to do. So it was very informative, um, but a lot of information about what we don't want to know that's in the river. <laughs> Well, um, but we might want to let that, like we can look on the website for when the, when this occurs. And no, we, so right now there's no system. Um, there is no and system. And that's what, that's what the communities were pushing, um, that there should be some standardized notification system that when okay. there are higher levels of sewerage in the river, there should be either a notification system, an email system that can alert the community so you can put out a red flag, if you will, on the dock yeah. or something that your boaters and your um, recreational users of the river can see it and know that it might not be safe. Um, but there is nothing in place at this point. Um, there's no standardized, um, I guess, reasoning for when this overflow happens. Some communities, it can be take a lot less rainwater than others. It really depends how the systems are built. I thought Representative Mira said they have to report how many tons they overflow into the river when they do it. They have to report it to DEP. There's no mechanism for DEP to post it or for us to then access that information. Oh. So that's the issue is we're trying to get away for um, the communities to be notified when this happens. Okay. Um, but right now they have to report it to the DEP. So just things that are um, coming down the road on the river. Um, a, <laughs> literally, um, a reminder that the town clerk's office will be closed this Wednesday through Friday for her professional development. Um, and speaking of the town clerk's office, I wanted to make you aware that in our year-end transfers, you're likely to see a very large transfer for the town clerk's office. Um, she has been researching software packages um, for all town clerk resources and uh, the package she has found she got some quotes on and it's around ten thousand dollars to do pretty much everything um, I do think it's imperative I think it's something that's necessary um, it will track everything that she does in her office for instance um, something as simple as um, elections who's up when they're up when their terms are up as you may recall we had to appoint a housing authority member because the position was missed because there hasn't been any formal tracking for things like that. Um, currently, the dog licenses and marriage licenses are kept in an access database that hasn't been updated the correct way. So she's having difficulty finding the records. Um, the records that are scanned, that have been scanned, are great to research, but the ones prior to that. Um, so I do think I've met with her. She's gone on a demo. She's gone to other communities where they are using it. She thinks it would be a really valuable tool. I tend to agree that I think it's time we really bring the town clerk's office up to the 21st century with automation. Um, so just I wanted to give you a heads up. I haven't fully committed to her. I've been looking at where we stand with year end balances. Um, and I do think we are going to be quite well with um, the money we will have left at the end of the fiscal year. Departments are doing really well. So I do think um, this should be a priority. And again, just as a heads up, you will likely see a transfer to cover the software so that she can get it up and running for July 1st and really just start using it. Are you all set? Well, I mean, we can do transfers for. You can do transfer for anything at the end anything? of the fiscal year. Yeah. Where she's new, I kind of support it. I just normally I don't like to do something without town meeting knowing, but right. No, I in wouldn't this normally. Case, there's no way right. we could have anticipated. Mm. This right, and I don't. Problem, and right? I don't think it's fair for her to have to wait until 2021 no, when it can be budgeted. Long. That's why I said to her, if I have the money this fiscal year, I will make a transfer, because um, then we wouldn't know until next year if there's money available or at a town meeting to move it. Um, would anybody so. else be trained to, to do any of this or just the town clerk? No, so she's very open to um, accessing it and having others access it. Um, she and I have spoken uh, when she's away this week. She'll have my e email on her um, email. So if people are trying to post meeting notices, they can send it to me. Uh, we've talked about having the, the scanner system, what she scans, accessible. So if she's not here and someone needs a birth certificate, I could print it off for her. Um, she's actually very welcoming to um, assistance um, or anything that we can do. Like I said, she's she spent a lot of time over in Merrimack. Um, Merrimack uses a software, and she came back from there so excited about the things that it could do <laughs> and how it could really streamline the office. So um, I wouldn't normally recommend it, yep. okay. um, but I do think it's okay. something that, you know, as a new person coming in, we have to give her the tools to succeed if this is what she feels would make the office better. Okay. So 
um, just as a heads up that that. Um, we also, as far as transfers go, where we stand right now, um, we will likely be short, I just got the bill in today, I haven't done it, um, about $25,000 on our trash and recycling. Um, so as you know, recycling costs are out of control. Uh, we were paying a couple hundred dollars a month. The bill we got today was for $4,100 for the last month of recycling. It is just astronomical. Um, so we are going to have to make a large transfer to cover that. Um, when is that contract up? Two more years. I think so we're, no, we may be in our, yeah, I think we're in our third, or we're going into our third year. So it's two more so years. Just a little, what you just said. I have a dumpster company at my shop. And back in April, I cleaned the office and we redid the office, but a lot of paper went into the dumpster. They have the DEP in the dump site where the truck had dumped back on April 24th. They went through it. They found out how many boxes of paper I put in there, and we just got a big fine. So, um, because I'm supposed to know that yeah. I'm supposed to legally recycle all paper. I never knew that in the dumpster company. Why, if I throw it in the dumpster and they don't tell me what goes in and what doesn't go in the dumpster, how is it my responsibility? So now I got to go answer the DEP on this fine about putting too much paper in my dumpster. So I it's live in Bill Ricca, um, and we just got a notice that the town of Bill Ricca hired um, about 25 younger folks, I'll say, for the summer, and their job is to go around and inspect everybody's trash and recycling and to start listing fines and violations of what's being thrown in the trash yeah. that should be recycling and vice versa. Because mostly on the recycling side that, you know, even here, Steve is great. He'll go through people's recycle bins and take out what shouldn't be recycled anymore. Um, but yes, we've gotten fines here that things are being recycled that shouldn't be. And um, the recycling game is a crazy, it's just a crazy world right now. But communities are really, that, really stepping up with. I would think that would be on the dumpster company, but they put it onto me. Yep. Yep, it, it's it's crazy. That's wrong. Yep. Well, you put it in the dumpster. <laughs> I know, but I mean, they yep. also should tell you what goes in and what doesn't go in the dumpster. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, but even so, I mean, we tell the residents. We post it on our website. It's people still will recycle things that aren't. Re I mean, who would have thought that shredded paper is not recycling? It's not recycling. <laughs> so shredded paper has to go in the trash because that is not considered recycling. No, so it's yeah. things like that that you can educate and educate, but. Um, so I'll let you know how Bill Ricca goes and what they're, they're going to literally go through everyone's dumpsters and start leaving notices. Well, <laughs> shredded paper ought to go in your compost pile. Is it, are we getting to the point where maybe a, um, some kind of a transfer station for recycling would be a better way to go than curbside? I mean, if we're getting fined. But where will it go after that? What are we going to do with the paper at the transfer station? That's the issue. Well, at least they we can't. know if people are bringing it down, if they would. I don't know. It's one more I mean, hassle, yeah. it's it's the fact that all the recycling used to go to China, and China does not accept it anymore. And now it's trying to find places to recycle the paper. It is one of the biggest commodities right now, and yeah. that market fluctuates dramatically from month to month. Okay. So um, that is probably the largest transfer. Will be um, like I said. I think it's going to be about twenty-five thousand. When I was looking at the invoices today, um, but that's so. just today. That's. Um but that's our last, today, oh. today we received our last invoices for the year. Oh. Um, so once so I factor those in. We get in. Yep, um, yep. I'm worried. Yep. So like I said, we have some good months that are like $1,200, and then today was a $4,100 recycling bill. That's crazy. So it's, um, it's and crazy. And we can't renegotiate the contract next time based on saying? No, because no, no waste company will allow you to set a fixed rate for recycling. They're all based and, on the market and the commodity. And if we would have put a recycling, I know down the Cape, now I, this is probably 10 years ago, my father had a home there, and we used to go in there, you have to put your trash here, your recycling here, your bottles here, blah, 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 and it got thrown into these big um, yeah. recycling machines, and then the truck would pick it up and they'd take it away. But again, we're probably going to have to pay that company to come do that. And it's where it's going to go, what it's going to cost when it's taken uh, away. Uh, and and you're not going to, you know, there's some people that aren't able to bring it to a uh, central location. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some, right. of the, some of these, uh, some of these people, they don't right. can do to bring it out to the, uh, to the curbside. But I okay. think if we can get more information out to them, I didn't know about the shredded paper. I would have thought shredded paper was recyclable. So. Does that, do we get fined for that if they find it or? Um, so we have it here, they'll take it out when they come and empty our bins, they'll take it right out. And, um, okay. So now we just don't throw it in our recycle bin, obviously. Okay. Um, but there's things like cartons, um, like certain milk cartons are not recyclable. Those are trash and um, it's just a matter of education. Mm -hmm. so. coffee, coffee cups aren't uh, yep. recycled. Yes. Oh yeah, I don't put So we put it, you know, it's right on our it's right on the front page of our website. We every, peri every periodically we, you know, recycle it and put new information that's out there. It goes to social media. 
it's just it's such a tough game right now but we need a little environmental tv show on public access we do we do we do um <laughs> so yeah so the transfers uh will likely not be on next meeting it'll okay. be on your first meeting in july uh, we have to approve them by the 15th of july to close out the year so i don't want to do them and then have to do another round once the final bills are in uh, the finance board is meeting on july 10th uh july 10th so i think our meeting is the 8th so we'll get them wrapped up that week but okay Otherwise, I don't notice anything, you know, too out of whack with what we normally do at the end of the year. So just those two items. Uh, and that is all I have. Okay. So moving on, we have correspondence. We have the minutes from the May 28, 2019 meeting. We have a letter from Connor Henry regarding his tour of duty. Um, we have a letter from Christine Camo regarding a parking violation. We have approval of the national um, pollutant discharge elimination systems permit by the EPA. We have a copy of the of the um, documentation handed out at the Merrimack River uh, District Commission um, kickoff meeting held on Friday, June 17, 2019. And just quickly, if I can comment on the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permit. So that is part of our MS4 permit that we've been talking about. Um, so they have approved our initial permit. Uh, we have to provide the first annual report by September. Um, so we will report to them that we passed the illicit discharge bylaw at town meeting. Um, uh, there's some things that the highway department needs to change, one of which is the way that the streets are being swept so that we try and eliminate the sand from going in. Um, but those things, we're actually having a meeting, I think, early July to finalize our first year's um, annual report on the MS4 requirements. So, Was the highway superintendent there? Um, we haven't had the meeting yet. I've invited No, him. no, this meeting that you had. Oh, uh, no. Nope. On the river? Yeah. I was the only one from Groveland that attended. Okay, um, so that's it. And we have the adjournment at, it looks like, uh, 855. 8.55. So moved. Okay, second. All in favor? Yep.